it's a big good morning and welcome to the 60th Adelaide Masters coming to you live from the Adelaide Bowling Club. It is finals day. Uh, we've had four days of action so far. Four players now remain in what is the most prestigious singles event um, in this state by far and close to the most prestigious singles event in Australia. Reese Taylor is my name, good morning. And sitting beside me to kick things off this morning is the man behind the scenes that gets this tournament underway every single year and steers the ship, our tournament director, Steve Hicks. Hicksy, good morning. Good morning, Reese. It's a pleasure to be on the mic with you. It's um, it's a cooler day today. The the, the weather's been, uh, been pretty warm for the last three or four days, but uh, we're a bit chilly this morning. Yeah. I'm sure some of the uh, markers in the last three days would have loved a day like this just to refresh themselves, but um, uh, we're down to three markers today, so uh, um, I'm sure um, being part of this uh, event at this end, uh, they're more than happy to mark in any temperatures, but man. Yeah. Totally agree. We'll talk about the volunteers in a second because they're a big part of your tournament and, and how they make this place tick, but... Um We'll cover off the uh, the matches first. Our live stream of the game this morning is, is one that I've been waiting for for the last probably 15 hours since we knew it was coming. Um, the two were really gorillas. Um, the Irish superstar dual uh, or single um, World Bowls gold medalist, Gary Kelly, uh, versus the dual World Bowls gold medalist and uh, three-time Adelaide Masters champion, Corey Wedlock. Um, Steve... Couldn't be a better game, I don't think, to kick us off today. No, it'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? Um, it uh, everybody says it'd be a worthy final, but I think it's uh, more intriguing that uh, only one of them's going to get to the final, and uh, we'll have a, um, a famous gun, in my opinion, playing uh, like a Cinderella story if, uh, from the other from the other semi-final. I, so I totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. And, and a good segue. So the other final is um, Mark Armstrong from Pine Rivers. Um, and, and and Mitch Sidebottom, who we saw in our live stream yesterday, the um, the big man from Victoria, who who just was unflappable yesterday in that in that quarter final against Tyson Wilson. He just keeps getting it gun, uh, done, doesn't he? It's um, he's uh, he's the master of getting over the line. Unbelievable, you know. I think he had a three-hour game against Gary Ball in his in his second one. Yep, 32 degree heat. Uh, to then come out and, and um, do it again against Tyson, 25-22 from memory. Um, would have slept well last night, I'd imagine. I think so. Maybe a few butterflies as well going into today. Yes. So, what's your um, what's what are you hoping for in the first few ends from the from our televised game? Well, whoever whoever settles first, I think um, is always good to see. But these these guys are so experienced that um, I think. They've done it so often before on on you know a live stream or a big event. So I, I, I'm just picturing that that you know Corey's probably going to plonk this first one on, and Gary might put the put the jack over the bank. Um, yep. So we are away, and um, two boys. Um, what a battle this is going to be. Yeah, no, you're right. The lounge room experts all expect it to be a draw and drive game, and one of them being as good a draw as you'd like to see, and one of them one of the great drivers on this bowl circuit so yep. we'll see if that pans out that way but it doesn't always go the way you think but gary's also an absolute freak on the draw as well and um yep. you don't know, uh, win a silver medal at the world bowls um and win a gold in the pairs without being an absolutely unbelievable player so we'll get settled into the action um corey's found his weight on the first one and holding a shot and i mentioned yesterday with corey's um, stream against caitlin inch yesterday morning I think he's got the best weight in Australia. Just never seems to miss it. Yeah. He's missed his weight, Reese. <laughs> I believe they call it a commentator's curse. <laughs> I'll be quiet, OK? <laughs> They're still, still settling in. The jump on the Adelaide, um, Adelaide Bowling Club Facebook page, and also the uh, Spacequake um, YouTube live stream. 
We hope you've enjoyed the coverage so far and we hope we bring you some special moments today. Would you agree that they're two of the quieter names at the tournament, both Corey and Gary? You look at them and maybe you think oh, that's a couple of boisterous blokes, but they're, they're, they're much more intense yeah, than right. some of our other uh, um, interstaters and South Australians. You're very right. Gary's just drawn shot there. I think that's that's probably the, the one he was looking for. No one really had shot before that, so Gary's just on the forehand draw. Corey now looking to probably arrive up under that front one of Gary's. That's finishing wide. Yeah, the boys are on, they're just on, on the green. Corey's face never changes. Gary no. shows a bit more emotion. Um, but you're right, lovely, lovely guys to talk to and super intense on the green, but ripping blokes off the green as well. I think you're right, Corey would make a great card player. He's I agree. got that poker face. Absolutely. So Gary looking to beat that outside bowl of Corey's for probably a second. I think he's done it. I believe he has. So looks like two to start for Gary Kelly, which is the perfect start. It's always good to get the yep. first couple of numbers on the scoreboard, Steve. Absolutely. I'm not convinced that either of them have got butterflies, but just in case they have that settled the nerves straight away. Well, something's happened because Corey's just ducked inside quickly, so he's already having a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is a tactical one that we've seen no? from okay. many players over the years. <laughs> we've got to mention our marker again is, um, is the five foot four. Uh, Rob McEwen. So I, I was very polite to him yesterday when he was marking Mitch's game and said that Rob was potentially five foot ten. So I need to correct that, and I do apologise to Rob for giving the correct height this morning. Um, Steve, you've managed the tournament. Um, you couldn't do it without your volunteers. No, the uh, the volunteers, seventy five percent of them come from the Adelaide Bowling Club and uh, we appreciate our members. I think we lose membership by people going, oh, I don't want to come to Adelaide because we won't have to do too much work, but that certainly doesn't, hasn't stopped people in the past. But I love it, the fact that people come from other clubs and, um, and decide that they're going to give their time for free. And um, we do appreciate everybody from ground staff through to um, marking and all the other little things around the place. Absolutely. And it gets every year you need more you need more work, work done because we now we live stream and we've got you know someone full time working mm. on the computer and Buddha hocking. Um it's uh, it really is a, a massive How big's his project. week? How big's his week been? Oh it's, yeah. And he hates every moment. Oh no he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great shot there by <coughs> by Corey. Um so Gary's gone to a, a shorter length here now. Um, be keen to see what the tactics are. The boys know each other so well. Yeah. You, you know, I guess playing to their strength this morning, I presume. So Gary's gone a bit short. I can probably see why with a shot like that. Yeah, that's lovely. We have got the uh, the graphic in the bottom left-hand corner too for the other semi-final, so keep an eye on that. I will get um, Mark Armstrong's um, name just corrected to... Chuck an S in there at some stage if the boys from Spacequake can hear me. So um, those boards will be updated as we go along. It is the first to 25, so could be a 10 in game, could be 30. I'd expect at this level, Steve, we're going to be here for a while. So I would think so. I don't think any of the four in particular are slow players, so the, the time will definitely be all to do with um, the tightness of the game rather yep. than... Yeah overly pedantic bowlers that we've all met. Great. So Corey looking just to play just a positive draw, looking to, to get over the top of Gary's shot bowler, potentially get a bit of jack on the move. He misses his front bowl, he's really close. Okay. A bit of love for you already on the live stream, Steve, for a Liverpool supporter. Jared Goodwin giving him a shout out. Morning, Goody. Yeah, Goody was going to be part of the tournament, but uh, a fell foul of a back injury. And so, Gary Kelly just running through a little bit. So, probably in a pretty good spot because Corey's looking to play a similar shot now. That's right. Good bit of cover, always in play. Corey looking to maintain that same weight as his last, so he can sit the bowl of Gary's clean and no jack. 
Jack all the way through to his last bowl. And what do we say? What a great house. Yeah, that's it. That, yeah. Should be should be commentators. Bounce, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Did bounce around a bit, but it eventually found that house. So, so Steve, it, it is just gone ten o'clock, but we've got to give a best big plug to our one of our, our major players and major sponsors, Coopers, um, and the mighty Australian Lager. Uh, I believe there'll be a few of those consumed um, over the last five, four days at Adelaide. I think there would have been. Mm -hmm. I saw them counting some strange paper stuff in the office, so okay. I think that comes from selling a lot okay. of uh, coopers. Yep, yep. Green ones? Yeah, they were. Yeah, they yeah. Were. They're nice ones, those ones. <laughs> Where do you find them? <laughs> in Karen's purse. <laughs> they had Carlos in there as security. So yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, we're safe if Carlos is there. <laughs> oh, dear. We could not run the events without our volunteers, but also without our sponsors. So a big shout-out to Coopers and also uh, CFS Bowlswear, um, Gommelsall Wines and the and Chain of Ponds Wines as well. Um, great partners of this club and this event. We could get people from Gomasol on the uh, mic, but by the time they stop talking, uh, the uh, the event would be finished. So we'll just stick with you and I. You have any contacts? I do. <coughs> okay. Yeah. I believe it was you and I last year on the commentary where it, potentially it was um, cash for comments. So oh. I, I, I mentioned Gomasol a few times, and all of a sudden a bottle of red wine tapped me on the shoulder. It did, didn't it? Mm, I got yeah. a strife for that. Yeah. Tax man had to audit me. <laughs> 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 so, Corey Wedlock, um, just looking for a little foot of weight. Uh, tell you what, he's not too far away, Steve. Mm, okay. Nice. Just giving Gary a different angle now, so potentially looking to sit, get the jack through the hole. He may play bigger oh, weight, yeah, which he, he has. has yeah. First one's away. Would have been a good looking target there with the two bowls and the jack, so he just peeled one away. Corey on the mat, faster than a Boeing 737. Doesn't waste any time at all. Hasn't added, but it is the backest. Yeah, Gary's just asking if it's just one or two, it's just the one, so. Gaz may play a similar shot and look for the bowl. They could both go. I think he has. Big way. Or the jack. Oh, geez, he's got through that gap there. Okay. It's unusual. He lines up for a drive as he almost lines up for a draw. Yeah, you can't so, tell. No. no. So it's mm. till, the, till the backswing becomes exaggerated, you, you're not 100% sure. Mm. And Corey's the same. Corey's got that swing action. You don't know whether he's going to swing big or swing slow. So, um, yeah. Corey attempting to add. No danger touching the jack no, too. He just looks a little bit high from where he's coming from is. though, Steve. Yeah. Low. Yeah. Okay, no. just the one. So, tightens the strings. Gets on the board. 3-1 to, to Gary Kelly to start things off. As I said earlier, Steve, the weather is definitely a little bit cooler than what it has been. It's a bit overcast. A bit of sun trying to break through now. Probably a bit more comfortable for the players than what it has been the last couple of days. Correct. Talking of uh, chasing the sun, um, our fellow commentator from previous years, we should have a shout out to him. He's, uh, he's gone on a holiday round Australia and um, I think the biggest thing he's going to miss is being on the mic and that's Barry Beaumont. And we're hoping he's listening if he's within, you know, he's upper Western Australia, I think at the moment. I believe but he is, yeah. So, um, yeah, got to miss Baz's dulcet tones. Is, yeah, but the trip he's having, I'll keep an eye on on Facebook. And it looks like he's having a fantastic time. Absolutely. Hasn't made Darwin yet. I think he is on the mid mid Midwest coast somewhere, mm -hmm. heading to Darwin. He'll be there for for probably June July, I think, for the Bowls Carnival. Loves his Bowls Carnival in Darwin, Baz. He's a the ladies love him too. Unlike you and I, that both <laughs> taken. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good-looking rooster, Baz. 
There's a great start. Gary Kelly, that's a great shot. Them. Yeah, Corey was, Corey was great, but that's that's done the job now. I'd say it's greater, but Baz wouldn't like that English. <laughs> and even a big thanks yesterday to all the all the superstars of our game that jumped in and did a bit of uh, special comments for me. No, oh, you did well recruiting. It's good, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. So there was a bit of a shout out to to get Josh Walker Davis back on the the mic after his stint yesterday, but he has jumped on a plane unfortunately, so we can't get him. But we will have some special guests throughout the day. We're trying to track down some of those Australian jackaroos that are still hanging around. So Josh is um, well known for playing in lots of tournaments. Mm. Do you think he jumped on a plane because he'd already found somewhere he could play this afternoon? <laughs> I've got no doubt. We've got no oh, doubt. Um, I'll tell you the story in a second that we mentioned yesterday about where he was over the Easter weekend. So Gary's one and a look, I think it is. It's been signalled as one, right? So from where you and I sit, it can't be far from two. Looking to drop off the outside bowl of his. Any turn out of his outside bowl works as well. Love to get down to the jack if he can. He's trying really hard. Yeah, it's definitely a second. Played. So what's Corey? What can he see from where he is? Forehand arriving. Solid weight. Looking for the two bowls. He'll get through his own. Oh, it's missed. Okay. So Gary now could just stick with the bowl. Yeah, he will stick with the backhand. If any touch on that outside bowl of his could bring it in. Yep. Holding two at least. Weight looks impeccable again. Just trying hard now. Here it comes, Steve. Oh, there it is. Definitely two. Yep. Oh, that's three in a look. It's a big number early. There's a three. That is a three shots. So three shots to Gary Kelly. Big, big multiple. All right, so some Ring 2 highlights. This is the addition we've got, Steve, to the camera work this year is um, some highlights of the of the other semi-finals. So the Mark Armstrong and Mitchie side bottom ring. Um, so Mark Armstrong is using the orange uh, bowls. And he's th on the board, he's three shots down, 3-0. So the Josh Walker Davis story is that he told me yesterday he qualified Thursday here. He jumped on a plane to Sydney Thursday night, caught a train to Newcastle and got there at 3 o'clock Friday morning. Played Friday and Saturday in a event, which he won. Caught a train back to Sydney Saturday night and arrived in Adelaide Sunday morning at 8.15. Airport shower back to Adelaide Bowling Club. That's, that's dedication. Is it fair to say he's possibly not married? We'd have to be. <laughs> <laughs> Unless his wife's in Newcastle. <laughs> uh, so Gary Kelly, 6-1 um, start. And, and just that one behind. Corey's response is pretty close as well. So Corey had a slow start. Was it against Ben Winther? Or he did. You're right. And, yep. And yep. The, the pundits thought, well, we're going to see his first um, mm. defeat in mm. four years. But um, has he not lost a game here? Is that right? I or would think that's true. Okay. I, can't, I can't think of him getting through as a lucky loser. Or yeah, anything, right. So. Okay. So the year that Nathan Black defeated Dave Ryan, do you know if Corey was here? I don't know. No, yeah, I'd have no, to find that's a good out, question. But yeah. yeah. But you would think the three events he's won, he hasn't dropped a game. I can almost picture Nathan Black knocking off somebody of magnitude. Maybe it was a semi-final. I know, I think it might have been a semi-final. If anyone knows, I know Ronnie Kuzmarski is on the stream this morning. Morning, Ron. Hope your uh, knee is... is no, um, it's a back, actually. Is it back-related yeah, knee? Or no, knee-related back? No, he's, I think he's hurt his back protecting his bad knee. Yeah, OK, that's fair. that's worse than his knee. All right. He's on the stream now, so if he does know, let us know, Ronnie. Corey with weight on the forehand, looking to get through the two bowls. It's a really good result. Absolutely. Great conversion. 
See the replay here now, Steve. So he's got up through the two bowls of Gary's. He's just got the one. He's actually split his own bowl. Jack on the follow through. Gary just asking how many down. He may play weight in return, but. No. The confidence to play the open hand. There you go. Backhand draw, Gary Kelly. Oh, that's why. Around for shot. Corey just. Corey following him down. He's close, Steve. How good is that for a shot? Close. Corey oh, Wedlock. Brilliant. Yeah. We asked the question on the stream, Steve. We get answers straight away. So thanks to Joshy Studham. Yes, Blackie did beat Corey. So we would think out of the four years he's had. So for more rink two highlights now, just watching Mark Armstrong's ball come down. We'll try to get these all day. Um, looks like he's sitting in the bowl of Mitchie's side bottoms. Maybe for second wood there. So one to Mitch. 4-0 Mitch side bottom at the moment. And we're 6-2 here. you got to win eight games to win an event, so what's that 24? I dare say Corey's about 31-1 and one for his time at LA Masters. Pretty good, isn't it? That sounds fair enough. Djokovic-like. Not convinced he was that famous the first year he came down, if, if you know what I mean by fame, but, you know, mm. I don't think members had heard much about him, but uh, since then, um, he's done everything that you can do in bowls, you know, yep. playing yep. for Australia and playing BPL he's um, um, he's got some B BPL um, uh, what are they, what's the, what's the MVP? They are there's there's probably a much cleverer word than <laughs> <laughs> BP yeah, anyway so Corey's changed the length here now gone a bit longer and the boys are just sort of finding their weight with this Definitely the longest end of the match so far. You've commentated on this rink. Mm. Was there uh, some times you find that going to the club or away from the club, the easier ends, did it mean anything in those first? Uh, I think Caitlin Inch game was here, wasn't it? Yeah. Look, th the only thing is probably from a bit of local knowledge is, is um, heading back towards the club, you always need to find that extra foot. Yeah, you think okay. you think you're right on it, and we did find particularly yesterday in the afternoon, and that could have been part of the, the track slowing down a little bit too. But just that extra extra foot of weight, as Corey Wedlock looks to drop inside Gary Kelly's just on the outside, one to Gary. Corey struggled yesterday morning a little bit. I mean, he still got through, but he sensed I sensed a bit of frustration with Corey where he had the back end away from the club was hanging a little bit on him, so wasn't turning as much as he would have liked. Probably the result of no wind yesterday morning either, so there wasn't much help from the west. But yeah. Gary just on the outside of Corey. Uh, two seconds. What's Corey got here, mate? I think he's asking if he's got two seconds. Uh, two seconds. How many seconds? How many please? seconds is the question? That's the question. Yeah. May look to look, look, look for the ball. Three seconds. Three seconds. Okay. So I would suggest Corey would look for the bowl with mm. solid weight. Doesn't want the jack though, because it doesn't have the back wood, so. Yeah. It feels like he's pretty close. Oh, That's a good one. shot. We'll see if Rob McKeown was right with the call for three seconds, but Gary's still got one in the hand, so. May not even know. It's a brilliant shot. How good's that video coverage? Gary likes it. He does. Watching it very, very intently. Oh, this is all over. It. That's why he's watching it, Steve. Beautiful. We'll never know if it was three seconds before that, because Gary just goes, I'll take one, thank you. I'll take a 7-2 lead. Getting some love from uh, from Ray Pierce, Steve. Vision and broadcast, best in the business, boys. So um, it's a good pat in the back to the club and the team from Spacequake Sport. 
And speaking of pats in the back, let's talk about Gomelsall Wines for a minute, Steve. What's your thoughts on them? You like their drop? Uh, I Not only do I like it, but um, the boss at home, that's her favourite drop. Very good. Okay. Was it a white little Sablonc? No, she, she's a red drinker. Okay, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a very um, unusual taste because she went from being a non-drinker to... To red Straight wine. Straight into red wine. Okay. No, I don't quite, you know, it should be small steps, but no. So. <laughs> I'm very much privy to a, to a Cab Merlot or a, a, or a Saint Blanc. Uh, sorry, a Shiraz. Saint Blanc's my wife's choice. A pretty good couple of starters here. So Gary's just short of a foot right on the line, though, so it's right in Corey's eye. Corey just a foot and a bit behind. And, um, Steve, the other semi-final, uh, Mitchie Sidebottom is out to an 8-0 lead, so he has settled first. Absolutely settled the better player so far. Yeah. And I was asked for my prediction in that game, so I went completely the other way. <laughs> Corey Wedlock has just gone straight through that hole with a backhand runner, looking for probably the inside of the front one to get them both, so... Good looking target for Corey. So you thought Mark Armstrong, that was your choice? I did, probably because I know a little bit more about Mark Armstrong. Mm -hmm. um, but Mitch. Gary Kelly, turn that bowl. Oh, tighten the target. Okay. Come back to that in a second, Steve. Corey should go big again, he does. Wait, any contact. Okay, interesting. The bowl is set. Pretty much in the same spot as it was in front of the jack. Um, purely sideways, yeah. absolutely. So it's cut up completely in half. And only one down there, Corey. Gary's got some space. So, yeah, you're looking, you, you thought Mark was the better option? I did, M mainly because I just haven't followed Mitch as, as, uh, as closely as have Mark over the last mm -hmm. three years. Yep. Well, I saw Mitch play yesterday against Tyson Wilson, as I said in the earlier bit. Unflappable. And uh, I'm really, really keen to see <clears throat> what Mitch can do. He started well. But his first to 25, so a long way to go. Corey now on the backhand. He's got about nine inches to draw a shot, but he just seems to be hanging a little bit wide. Weight wasn't too bad for the shot. Maybe one it is. The one. Mm. So Mitch side bottom, your... your um the guru on finding out facts from uh, players. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Hang on. Another, another quick, um, quick highlight. So this is um, this was Mark Armstrong earlier. Um, yeah, okay, so this was the four, I believe, he might have dropped. So um, play with weight. Look for the conversion there. I'll try to get some more details of what the highlights are coming up in a minute. Um, yeah, I just wondered, had he? Don't know much. Yeah, don't know much, yeah. No. About Mitch, no. Um, Brett Spur was 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 um, very much complimentary about his game. So, Harry Kelly just finding his range, getting first on. So they're coming out sweet, aren't they? Yeah, indeed. Do we say that Gaz has settled better? Playing the telling bowls. Fair reply from Corey. It's going to settle behind. Mitch side bottom's just drawn shot. Three down to one up over there as well, so. Mark Armstrong is coming for a look. Corey just asking for that bowl to give a little bit. Okay. That'll be shot now. Hello. Marcus Steve on commentary. Jumped the gun there. <laughs> so Gaz looking to Get up over his own bowl. Just get a bit of movement. Just change that head a little bit. It looks really juicy for Corey right now. 
Need some. Oh, didn't need much. Any touch on Corey's ball? He was dropping in for second. Yep. Corey changing to the forehand now, so looking to, I'd suggest, get his ball up once, or if he's tight, he sits the ball of Gary's. He's in yep. a really good area, Steve. Up once, that will be shot. Well played. Gary now coming for a look. You can see the replay now. Perfect weight. Bowl up once. Well played. I'm not convinced there's a, an easy draw. So with Gary, he might pull out the... The, the wacko. One, the one wood. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I guess he's looking at potentially what happens. Um, you know, Can the bowls go clean? Yeah. If his bowl... I think even if he gets the outside of, of his own bowl, he's probably going to get onto the jack and potentially kill. Um, no real danger with probably second and fourth at this stage. He has got an 8-2 lead, so you yeah. probably play a bit more comfort when you've got an 8-2 lead rather than being down 8-2. About to find out. He may just want to turn his bowl once. We're about to find out. That's what he's playing. I think yeah. he's just looking to turn his ball once. Yeah. Potentially get onto the jack. He has got the catcher there if he gets the jack. Two rolls on his own. He's watching it intently. He's watching it really closely. Jeez. It's a bloody good effort. <coughs> it's a fair head of bowls, Steve. It is. You'd expect that. We are at the semi-final stage of the most prestigious singles event in the country. A simple shot for Corey, or I don't know what do you call a simple shot? No, at least there's a simple conversion for two, perhaps, is what I'm saying. Oh, potentially turn his front one yeah. over again, which was the other option. Than the yep, yeah, up once is good. If he's wider, he can just drop in off the front. There we go. Oh, what's got here? One in, one out, I'd one suggest. Out. Yeah. All right, so one to Corey Wedlock. What does Corey do now, Steve? Are we changing things a little bit? He went a bit longer last time and didn't work. It didn't work, but <coughs> Gary is definitely playing the short ends fantastic. I think he'll stretch it out again and um, see if he can um, get onto the long ends quicker than Gary. So here's some ring two highlights as well. Um, so this was the shot before where Mark was one down, had plenty in the head, bang, straight through, set at Mitchie's side bottoms bowl for three. So brilliant shot there by Mark. Gets him on the board 8-3. Needed one of those shots, I think, mate. It's always good, you know, you're struggling early, you get a bit of a weighted shot out the way and you find your range. Just gives you a bit of confidence. is holding um, in the next end. He so. is. He's definitely changed the length too, so Mark's gone full length on, on Mitch as well. We were right with the long end. It is... Can I get any longer? No, it is mm. full length, mm -hmm. yeah. Corey now... Looking to make a huge correction. Line looks good. Looks Any good. piece of the jack is handy. Ooh, it's a pretty good shot. Crowd's building slowly, Steve. Expect a really big crowd this afternoon. Hope so. It's been oh, good all week, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, I think the weather's good for watching bowls. Great. Gary just a little bit shy there, so he's asking position. He's, he wouldn't mind a piece of the jack now. Get it out of Gary's eye completely and hold a really good three. Watching it closely again. It's around the mark. Wouldn't sit there, would he? Okay. Mm, yeah, he's not happy with that. He's, you and I are happy with it because we're close. But all he sees it as a target. Anything inside three feet's good for me. 
Gary Big Weights looking for the jack straight into the pit. Ooh. He hasn't missed that by much. Uh, found a gap where there wasn't much of a gap. Always happens that way, doesn't it? Yep. Mm. Marker on the second on the other um, uh, rink. Steve Carlos having a real good look there just to work out who's holding shot. Corey now would love to get that bowl of his off the line or turn the jack around the corner. Really wants to change his head now, take the shot away from Gary, changing it slightly. No, okay, he is holding four. So, a missed drive. Very yeah, he's going to back himself, though, mate. You're big again. Put the jack over the bank. Big shot here for Gary Kelly. Four down. And he's half the jack. Completely out. Big hit, Gary Kelly. A big save. You've got to back yourself, don't you? You've got that weapon in your arsenal. Um, whether you're four down or one down, that shot was always on for Gaz. And you put faith in him most times to hit that. They're going to play the same. They're going to play the same um, end, and so a, a tactical move that because uh, all eight bowls were down the other end. And mm. They could have swapped, but Corey's uh, going up. Going to bring you back and do it again. Yep. <laughs> and why not? He was, you know, he was one getting the close ones. <laughs> so we're just seeing now, Mitch side bottom, a few down, and uh, the last ten he's just rolled his shot up. So he probably gone from three down to one up there as well. So Mitch now nine three. Uh, even Mark Armstrong. Steve? I believe there's a twist in the commentary, isn't there? There's a very good twist coming up. Okay. Indeed. Right. Thank All you right. for your time, mate. Um, thanks for everything you do for the, this tournament. I'll let you get back to your uh, official duties. No worries. And um, best of luck for the rest of the day. It's By been a great way, event. this stage of the tournament, official duties is doing very little. You're going to sit and relax, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Steve. Thanks, mate. Steve vacates his, his chair. Going to get one of the real good guys of our sport into to join me. He puts his headset on. Other than St John's Park legend Benny Twist. Hello, Ben. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very good. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good to be here. Should be a not already been a good game, but should be a, a cracking rest of the game here between these two. Indeed, indeed. What do you know about the two boys? You know them pretty well. Yeah, obviously they um, they're both great competitors. Two of the best players in the world and. They do um, relish playing singles as well. They mm. get around and play all the big singles events, as I'm sure a lot of people watching have seen. So they've played each other a fair bit, I would have thought, too, over oh, the yeah, years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Very, yep. very good friends as yep. well. Yep, How do you go playing a major, major event like this against a good club mate? Um, do, do you find it easier? Do you, do you find it that you try harder? What, what's, the, what's the mentality going into a game like this for these two? Oh, it's definitely difficult. I personally always find it hard when you're playing good friends. Mm. Uh but I suppose you just got to try and get that out of your mind and, and, and play the bowl, not the opposition. Yep. And you know, you obviously you always want to do well for yourself. And but if you can't do well, you want your friends to do well. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, yep. Yep. The way I sort of look at it is, you know, play, just play the bowl and not the player. And you know, if you do get beat, well, obviously you're going to be happy for your mate. But yep. I think if you're thinking about that during the game, sometimes you just don't have that extra competitive edge, that little fire, which can sometimes be, you know, a couple of percent off. As Corey yeah, plays absolutely. A good shot there. Yep. Yeah, so Corey's definitely changed things up. So Gary was really finding it early with um, some some sort of minimum minimum length ends, and Corey's grabbed the jack now and gone T to T. So definitely, it well, had to happen, I guess. Um, Corey pretty comfortable on four length ends, I'd imagine. Yeah, and um, particularly it's interesting to see as well when that uh, last end was killed by Gary that uh, Corey said straight away, throw the balls back and yep. play in that direction. Yep, yep. We've seen uh, in the first few ends of this game just that, particularly on the back end coming back towards. Uh, where they're playing at the moment. Gary Kelly's sort of got on a string. He's been putting bowls all around the jack. So a smart move there from Corey, probably acknowledging that he's going better in this direction yep. and Gary's not going quite as well. Yep, yep. So Corey holding a couple at this stage, looking to probably just beat the wing bowl on the back one of Gary's, I'd imagine. Looks to be on a reasonable line, asking it to hold. To the shot of Gaz's. Pretty good wipe. Yeah, just wanted to catch that back ball of Gary Kelly's. 
Not a log on here for Gaz, just a backhand draw again. You can, can trail the jack around the corner. What's he got? About six inches of room? If that. Oh, he's stalking it. He's liking it, isn't he? Looks to be second wood from where we are here, but funny angles. Definitely one. It is. So second wood. One to Corey. Eight to four. It's great to have you here, mate. Actually, I'll get a sponsor first, mate. We'll have a quick chat. So Cooper's a uh, major partner of uh, the event and also our club, the Australian Lager. Absolutely beautiful drop. Had a few of those over the weekend, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've got a non-alcoholic version. So yeah, okay, yeah. very well played. Yeah. I like that. Uh, yeah. Look, uh, we, we could not run these events without our, without our partners, and uh, you're heavily involved at the, the St John's Club. You've obviously got some pretty big partners there as well, mate. You just can't do these things without um, sponsors. So uh, absolutely, running these events, you know, there's little little extra costs that people don't realise as well. Uh, so those those sponsorships go a hell of a long way. Yep. So you've enjoyed your few days, mate. Absolutely loved it. We were just talking about it uh, last night. What a beautiful city Adelaide actually is. Mm. We went and had a look around in the city last night, went out for dinner. and It's such a, a beautiful uh, city. It's really well set out, lots of parklands. Yep. Yeah, she's not your um, Sydney or Melbourne, is it? It's, um, it's like a big country town. It is, yeah. It's got a good <laughs> vibe to it. I quite like it. And the weather's been fantastic too, so we've, we've, we ordered that for you guys. <laughs> I hope you appreciated it. Yeah, a little bit, little bit more overcast today. Still beautiful weather, a little bit cooler. So the greens are just a fraction slower with that extra cloud cover. We were talking earlier about Corey's record here at the Adelaide Masters. Um, so he's won three, uh, and the only match he's lost is a semi-final with the Nathan Black, 25-24. So pretty good record. Does love these greens. It's not a bad record at all, mm -hmm. considering the field that's uh, normally yep. assembled here as well. Absolutely. He's just got a knack, Corey. He... He's just one of he's got that I mean he's obviously one of the best players in the world for sure, but he's just got this ability to get out of games. Like just at the moment, Gary Kelly's certainly been outplaying him so far. Yep. But he's just hanging in there and then all of a sudden he'll play a couple of really good ends and he'll be, you know, square or in front. He's just got an amazing knack to hang in there and just get out of trouble when he needs to and yep. to win singles events and to have that kind of record that he does have here, you need that. You've got to hang tight, don't you? You can't play brilliant every game. Yep. You know, he's not he's not Superman, no one's that. But be able to hang in there and, and just sort of scrap out games is, is an ability that he, he certainly does very well. So he pretty close there. It looks like Gaz has still got shot. We're going to find out from our market. Rob, Gary's asking the question. <coughs> looks to be close, OK. Gaz just needs to stick to the forehand, Ben, and just beat his last bowl. Yeah, just a draw. Probably just asking just out of curiosity, really, rather than changing of his shot. Yep. He's got to draw up there and flop his own down. I'll just sneak underneath to Corey's bowl. Watching it intently. Very close. A little bit of the jack is good. Well played. So, one to Gary Kelly. We'll see Corey play something similar. Just try and turn the jack around the corner or sit that last bowl of Gary's. Sticking with draw weight, Ben? Yeah, just over, I'd say. We're trying to play about a metre of weight. I think his weight looks really good. Just depends on whether it holds or not. I just feel like he's under a little bit. Yeah. Look at that weight. Look at that weight. So, one to Gary Kelly as it lies. Just having a look over on our other semi final, Mitch Sidebottom and Mark Armstrong. Mitch is, uh, flew out of the blocks the first couple of ends. He, mm -hmm. uh, he really did put the pressure on with his first two bowls. And uh, Mark's just sort of scrapping around there, trying to get out of trouble. But uh, Mitch has certainly come out of the come out of the block flying. I think if you were Mitch this morning, what we would have asked for is to settle quickly. I think as well, big semi-final. So he did that real well. He, he certainly has. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mitch and Mark both brilliant players. Been around a while, but they haven't got a lot of experience in finals yep. at these kind of events. So yep. definitely a bit of nerves there. So we'll see how that game unfolds. 
Gary looking for turn now to get inside his own. Just drop and flop in. I don't think he's done enough. Uh, it's definitely one. <clears throat> Have a look for that second one, I think. Nope. Nice quick one. One to Gaz. So 9-4 now. We'll see that uh, slightly shorter length, I guess, trying to stay away from the tee. Yeah, just throwing the jack. A couple of action replays here. So Mitchy side bottom. We talk about steady Mitch. There's um, a couple of shots there, and then Mark Armstrong backs it up. Okay, not too sure that one was a bit of cover, maybe, but probably looking to play a bit of weight. So three down there. That was the that was the shot that out of the three of the board. So just twelve to three. So I guess just sticking to that length that he's been playing really well thus far. Jack about, oh, what's that, about four metres from the tee? I there suggest so, yep, yeah. yep. He's been playing that length really, really well. And handy start. Platinum pennants coming up. How good's that look? Oh, it's going to be amazing. Starts uh, this Friday night for yep. a few teams. Our, our game at the Saints, our first game's on Saturday the 6th. It's going to be an amazing season. Twelve extremely good teams and lots of good marquees as well to sort of bolster up the, the strength of the competition. A great, great shot there from shot, Corey. Corey Wedlock. Those squads look phenomenal. Yeah, they certainly do. It's going to be a hell of a comp. <laughs> going to be quite a few games live streamed too for those that can't make it to watch, um, for those in the state. So Bowls New South Wales are going to be live streaming one game per round. Fantastic. At least one game per round. And then you'll you'll see a lot of the clubs live streaming as well. I know uh, most of the clubs have got their own live streaming equipment or yep. they've hired Happy Bowler or one of the other yep. live streaming services. Yep. Yep. So there's going to be a fair bit on. So for those in the state can hopefully watch as many games as they possibly can. I believe um, uh, Lee Stinson just said that it actually is going to be Spacequake uh, doing that. So the same broadcast production as what we're looking oh, at now is going to be doing the Bowls New South Wales oh, Platinum. That's great. That means you're going to get a good product then. Yeah. Absolutely. So done a brilliant job so far what we're looking at here now. We thank them so much for their support and we obviously thank all our guest commentators as well. You don't have to hear my voice so often. Ben, thanks for joining us. It's been, been brilliant and it was great to have Brianna next to me yesterday morning as well. So, Corey holding one now. He'd love to pick up a multiple here now, wouldn't he? Just to close that gap a bit closer on Gaz. Yeah, it's, it's obviously vital to keep scoring ends, but he, he wants to get back to that length as well, get Gary off this length yep. that he's been playing really well on. Just going to pull up fractionally short, so still one to Corey. little touch around the corner here from Gary is what he'd be after. Make the shot, make the head very good. Another one to Mitch, side bottom across there, 13-3 now. Gaz looks to be a little bit bit tight, Ben. Yeah, just underneath. No damage though, still one to Corey. Got, got a couple up to you, Corey. Is there can, a forehand shot there? There is, you can see him having a look at that now, whether there's a, just a up and over on the forehand trying to sit that bowl of Gary Kelly. You can even use that wing bowl as well. Get back and land it out for three or four. Don't see a lot of danger there. Very no, I was just thinking that if he anything through his own bowl gets the jack moving towards the marker's feet, so that's that's a couple or two or three. As you said, if he gets through the blue pretty solid, I don't see much danger. We're about to find out if he likes it. You'd play it? Absolutely. Mm. He's six feet away on the forehand. Any connection on his front bowl or Gary Kelly's second shot has got to get a result. He's it awfully close. close here, Ben. He's trying harder. He's got it. Oh, he's played That's it well. a great shot. So it looks like three. It had to be three shots. It is three shots to Corey Wedlock. I don't think the crowd fully sort of saw that shot from where our angle was. There wasn't much of us applause, but that's a fantastic shot. Oh, just a big bowl in the, in the context of the game. And Gary, just a little bit unlucky that he happened to turn that bowl and give Corey a chance, but credit where credit's due. He's taken that chance and that's a big shot. Absolutely. So here we are again. So that's the Mitch, Mitch side bottom holding two again. So he's putting the pressure on Mark early. Um, First two bowls he's yep, really getting yep, in. Yep. And again. So he did get one this end. So it's 13-3 at the moment. Um, some great coverage from this roaming camera. So we hope you're enjoying the added addition this morning with the, the highlights. Okay. So Mark's played the shot through the bowl and Mitchie had the cover, so. Don't know who's holding shot at the moment, but 13-3 right now. 
And uh, back to our, our main live stream, Rick Corey's gone really, really short here. Matt back. Jack just past the 21 metre length mark. So what's his thought process there? He obviously, Gaz was playing short. Corey's gone gone full length. Probably didn't work as well as he'd like. Is that? Yeah, I think you're just trying to mix things up here. Yep. Gary's. I said Corey. I mean, there's only two shots difference on the board. Yeah, but exactly. Get the impression that Gary has been outdrawing him. So he's just trying to change things up a little bit here. Just trying to throw Gary off the mark. Plus, uh, well, that's a great shot here from Corey. Well played. Plus, Corey generally does favour the short end as well. Yep, that's where okay. he does feel at home. Yep. Uh, normally, that'll be his go-to. If he's if he's not entirely sure what length to play, he'll just play short because that's what he knows he does well. Yep. So, but uh, I think so. Probably a little bit of that, and a little bit of just trying to throw Gary off his game just a little bit. The guys looked to be in a pretty good area. Didn't need a hell of a lot more to turn that ball up, one more up. Corey just asking how much room he's got between Gary's bowl and the jack. Not, uh, not the dream bowl he was after, but a very, very good position. It's in play, isn't it? It certainly is. Mm -hmm. Gary will be just up and over here, either on the forehand or the backhand. Not really sure. Asking where that shot ball yeah. is in relation to Jack Hyde. I think he might play the forehand here. It's only just in front of the Jack. Loving the really clear sort of um, information from our marker as well. Gary definitely arriving. Going to get through his own. Volunteers have been great this week, haven't they, Ben? Oh, they have. It's been a been a big team of volunteers. Obviously, for singles, you need a little bit more with the with the likes of markers. Mm -hmm. Throughout the five days of play, they've done a great job, and Adelaide Bowling Club have done a really good job coordinating that as well. It's not not easy. No. Thank our entire team. We also thank the team that uh, given given Scotty T all the all the work on the on the greens as well, because um, they're in fantastic condition for this time of year. So they've really gone up and beyond too. They, they've rolled the green in between every, every game, game. Every yep. game. So they've rolled it before the first game, between the second and between the third. Really gone up and beyond to try and get the best product they possibly can and they've done well. You a fan of that? I think I am. Yeah. You know, I, I think I am. You, know, you don't see it a lot, but it's, um, you know, green keeping is all about putting the work in and the more work you put in, the more you get out of it. Absolutely. So yep. they're obviously putting a hell of a lot of work in the, in the, in the upcoming to this and then obviously during it as well. Mm. So Corey just tried to get back with his last one just to see a bit, a bit of cover with Gary's two there. I'd suggest Gary will stick with the same sort of weight. Yeah, just looking to land that bowl of Corey's. Just a fraction wide. Good to wait for it. So one more to Corey and he'll close the gap to one. I'll be interested to see what length he plays. Will he go short again? I think he probably will. Well, he mixed things up again with the fact that he was so good with the long end you know, last mm -hmm. time. Now, mate, um, we talk about sponsors, a big partner of our club in this event is CFS Bowlswear, um, a massive player in the, the Bowls apparel um, business. So to Graham and the team, we thank them for their support. Um, if you're looking for your next um, complete custom redesign of a uniform or any uh, winter wear, casual caps and, and hats, there's plenty of these beautiful Adelaide hoodies floating around this morning, Ben. They are all from CFS Bowlswear. They are as warm as warm can be, and they look fantastic. I wear mine socially as well, just to put the Adelaide Bowling Club name out there so um, if you're looking for any um, any new designs for your club, if you're part of your club, you're in your club committee and you need something give uh, give Graham and the team from CFS Bowls wear a ring, you will not be disappointed Mark Armstrong picks a three up on that rink next door as well, so 13-6 just things have settled down now, so could be into the long haul over there. And speaking of long haul, we're at 9.8 here. We are, and Corey, as we discussed just before, um, we spoke about the CFS where Corey has gone T to T, is mixing it up, so he's gone minimum length last end, T to T this end. Not a bad strategy sometimes, just trying to throw someone off his plane yep. really, really yep. well. And you saw Gary Kelly just 
probably play his worst end of the game last end, really. Yep. And he's just a little bit off with the first one. So the ploy so far for Corey is working. But of course, it only works if you can get close yeah, exactly. as well. <laughs> yeah. Is that something that Corey would have been thinking about in advance to go, right, if I win this next end, I'm going to go long? Oh. Does that give you a mental edge to go, I'm thinking about it and Gary's I not? Think so. yeah, yeah, I think okay. he definitely would have. You know, you've you got game plans. You go into games with game plans. And I think sometimes when your opposition starts off in the manner that Gary did, you think, OK, well, I've got to try and make this the most difficult as I possibly can. And I think he would have had the mindset if he won that end to, to, to keep changing it up. But I wouldn't be surprised if he wins this end. He goes back to short as well. Yep, yep. Gary just a foot shy, probably perfect weight, but fair chance he's holding shot. Still a bit of room there. Corey changing to the backhand now. Asking it to arrive. Marker Rob just indicating Gary Kelly does hold one. They are pushing straight into that breeze coming this way as well. So um, that last ball of Corey's probably just got hit a little bit. We can hear the flagpole slicking behind us. So it's a bit of breeze coming up. Gaz has played pretty good weight to sit that ball. We'd have been looking to maybe turn his own, I presume, or get to that ball of Corey's. Yeah, just a fraction on the high side of that. Should still be one to Gary Kelly. Troy, the score of the Mark Armstrong rink, it is in the bottom left-hand corner. So it is 13-6 at the moment to Mitch side bottom. Mark did get a three in the last end, so a bit of a sneaky comeback. Oh, I can't see the jack at the moment. Can you see that jack, Ben? Uh, Mark's holding two. Okay, sure. two. Corey on the run here for the Gary Kelly bowl. Oh, the jack. So free kick here for Gary. Just looking to lose a metre of weight, draw another shot. Be a bit of a soft two here, couldn't it? Yeah. Looks to be in a pretty good line. Just asking you to drop around his own bowl. No, 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 no. Well, I don't think that's going to count. A bit unlucky, just needed to miss that bowl. favours only one by his body language. We might see the tape come out here. No, one it is. So 10 eights now. Uh, we'll have a quick look next door and see what's going on here. So I think this was the three that Mark picked up. So where is that Jack? Can't see much there, can we, mate? Must be somewhere because Mitch was running. Jack was running okay, ditch, Jack yeah, in the well. So he was looking to get his toucher into the ditch. Yeah. There. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that three made it uh, 13 shots to six in favour of Mitch. But uh, just looking at the head now, Mark is holding at least one or two. So Mark forging a bit of a comeback over there, as as we expected. I guess when you're potentially 10 down in a singles game, you set yourself many goals to um, get back within five, maybe, and then. You know, what's next after that? Win one and win two, win three? Yeah, definitely. Yep. Actually, I heard Scotty T mention something. He was talking to a couple of uh, new bowlers yesterday, and I happened just to be sitting next to him, and they spoke about his game against Nathan Pedersen, which he trailed by a fair bit. Yep. He got back to 24 all. Ended up losing that game, but he, he pepped back, I think, a 12-shot deficit. And they said, how did, you, how did you sort of manage, and what was your mindset? And he said, well, he said, when you're 10 shots behind, he said, the opposition know that they're going well and they're cruising. If you mm. can just get back within two or three or four or even five shots, yep. he said, that's the tough part because then it makes them think about it a little bit. And they think, oh, gee whiz, I was, I was ten shots clear here. Yeah, exactly. So yep. every little shot counts. And likewise, Mitch has started so well here. If Mark can just string a few ends together, get that momentum. Momentum in bowls is such a big thing. Agreed. Corey Wedlock has just played a front toucher. Gary Kelly's response was pretty handy as well. So we're, we're back in the groove of these tight heads after a bit of a loosey last end. Yeah, that, that was the same yesterday morning with the game between Corey and Caitlin. Um, Corey was out to 10 and Caitlin started chipping away, chipping away. And next thing you know, we're back within two or three and it was, it was game on. So... 
small wins. Yeah, absolutely. We've had some great games on the live stream, actually. We've been that, lucky. That game yeah, yesterday afternoon, that was, uh, that was yep. a beauty, wasn't yep. it? Yep, indeed. So, Corey, what's he looking to do here? Just sneak around his front one of Gary's and get a second one around it? Yeah, he was just putting up a tad short. So, Gary uh, got, got two or three seconds here. Got a pretty good setup, hasn't he? He does. He, he's got a couple of options. He can try and just sit the bowl trail the jack if he sits the bowl um, onto the jacket should come out to his two and he mm -hmm. might even follow on for three yep alternatively if he doesn't like that he can try and clip the bowl off for three and if he gets the bowl onto the jacket should kill if he wants to use a little bit more weight but I, I think he'll probably go with option one here and try okay. and sit this bowl off His backhand. He's watching it. Leaning. Oh, he's very close. He's going to get down. He's a good shot here. Well, he's played well that. Well played, Perfect. Kelly. How good's that for a shot, Ben? That is exactly what he wanted to do. He's actually made four. I thought he was going to make three out of it. Is that option one? That, that, that's, like, <laughs> that's option one that's A. Op that's option diamond, I think. He's made is, four out of it. That is in the front row of the plane. That was fantastic. You can see on the replay now, weight impeccable. Just got the ball enough. Piece of the jack as well. Ball straight through that hole. Well, we Brilliant. Bit, we'll see a bit of weight here now from Corey. Corey. Get the shot ball through the jack. He does have the backward. Forehand solid. Okay, one out. Big, big turnaround in this game. So, three to Gary Kelly. 13 to eight. Probably suggest that is the Cooper's Australian Lager shot of the day so far, Ben. Absolutely. Boy, oh boy. 13-7 on the Mark Armstrong and Mitch side bottom rinks. The gap's down to six. Yeah, watching at home at the moment, you're thinking about coming down to Adelaide Bowling Club, please do. It's a bit chilly, so bring a jumper, but see plenty more shots like that one over the next few hours with the final to kick off this afternoon, sometime around half past 12, 1 o'clock. If you want to stay at home, get comfy. Grab a Cooper's Mild and uh, enjoy the viewing. His weight's pretty good. Um, talk about Joe Clark for a few minutes, mate. Uh, great young fella. Had a really good tournament. Yeah, he's a great. He's a great kid. Uh, Nineteen years old. He's got a big future. He uh, is a very, very good singles player in particular. Um, won the uh, the Launceston Classic yep. um, a few months ago, actually. Like the big dog or the mad dog, whatever it was called. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah he defeated Corey Redlock along the way. He beat uh, Gary Kelly in the semi and Aaron mm -hmm. Tees in the final. Fantastic. So it's pretty, uh, some pretty good scalps for a 19-year-old. Yep. He had a really good event here as well, making the quarterfinals. Yeah, uh, that's great. Mark Armstrong played exceptionally well yesterday afternoon yep. to, to defeat him. Yep. But no, he's got a big future. You'll see, uh, you'll see a lot of a lot of Joey Clark on these live streams in the future in, in big singles events. So yeah. I expect he'll be thereabouts for quite some years. Yep. Just uh, as Gary stays on the backhand, drawing away. Just having a look on the other rink. Mitch side bottom looks like he scored a full count of four. It's a really soft four if it is, isn't it? It is, yeah. Okay. Shots. Wow. Gary Kelly just underneath the line with good weight. That little mini, uh, mini um, comeback there from Mark, yeah, just all yep, of a sudden. Yep, 17-7. The difference now back out to 10. Corey now looking to just find a little bit more weight. Well, he doesn't want to sit next to the jack and invite a weighted shot. Well, he has. That's a little bit unlucky. See a forehand drive here now from Gary. Big weight. Jack or bowls. Jack straight in the pit, I believe. So his bowls ended up just to the left of the 
to the middle of the rank, the Jack's in the corner there on the right hand side. I'm trying to get some angle if we can, maybe from the other end, but um, we've probably got about six feet, I'd suggest, Ben, between Jack and Bowles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks uh, like it's just the one to Gary, so we've got six feet to draw the shot here, out to the corner of the rink. Bit of uncharted territory, so we can see the Jack there, about six feet. Try and capture it if we can. Rory just urging this one to run. He's only got to get to the T to count. T's enough, isn't it? I would say so. Trying very hard. Uh, I think he's done enough, but it's going to be close. Well, if we thought it was six feet away... <laughs> we're, we're <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit in the ditch, and they've got that angle of the ditch as well, so they'll have to get the tape out and have a look unless Gaz can see from where he is. Corey doing the very technical step measure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be putting the hand up and going, let's get an umpire for a quick look, shall we? <laughs> uh, it looks like, looks like one to Corey. Yeah. But I think Gary's saying one to Corey. Yeah. No, I think he was just hoping more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Gary's was just past six feet away. Yeah. <laughs> well, a good save from Gary, nevertheless. He was three down, but another good end from Corey. Yep. Four good bowls. Absolutely. So I'll have a look at this uh, rink next door as well. Just trying to capture where we're at. So I believe that potentially was... This is the four. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you can see there. Look how open that is. Mitch just, you know, not doing a, doing much to add an extra one, so there's probably got two or three feet to draw a second Mark wood. And here was I think he just ran into the short, short, short bowl here coming in to probably draw the shot. That's that head breeze we're talking about coming this way as well, so, you know, one or two feet away. And Mitch with ample room to draw four shots, so... seventeen seven now. Corey's thrown. Can't be much shorter than this, mate, can you? You're probably 10 inches away from the tee at the front. Yeah, you can see the, the 21 metre mark there, which is the blue line across the green. So it's about 21 metres and, as you said, 10 inches. Great shot from Gary Kelly. And this is the this is the direction that Gary Kelly's been dominating in. He's got a couple of numbers going in this direction, including that three last end. Corey's got to find a way to try and win ends going in this direction. Yep. He's going very well in the opposite direction. Yeah, correct. He's got to find a way to win the end here. That's not going to help. It's not ideal at all, is it? Just turned it behind the jack now, so it's no wing action. Good line again. I just can get to hurry a bit more. I just very well it closely. How good is that for a shot? That is Corey Redlock. No touch. About uh, half an inch in front of the jack. Beautiful shot. One bowl targets. Gary's looking to arrive. Half close here. Ooh. <laughs> Doesn't get much closer than that. Didn't need much of a touch. Any bit of that bowl of Corey's had the jack spring him back so what's Corey do now Ben he's got to try and run for cover it, it looks to me as if Gary does make contact it's going to hit his second shot and bounce out towards towards Corey's uh, bowl just past the jack so if I was Corey I'd be chucking another bowl out near there make Gary play the perfect weight if he can turn and drop inside the third shot he's, that's probably his maximum result yep done well. That's about where it's going to go if Gary does overplay this with weight. Gary having a good look at this. So 
So Gaz looking to make contact with Corey's bowl. Yeah. It's just, just a draw. Well, I think he can't, can't play too much, at. can he? I think he's got to play probably a bit less weight than his, than his third bowl. But he was looking at his options there. I'd, I'm sure he'd love to have a run at this, but I don't think he can. He, there's a bad result through the edge of his own to clear both of his bowls out. I think he'll play probably just a, just over the draw, just trying to crack an egg here on the back end. Yep. He's only got to really touch it. Jack's only got to move a couple of inches or even up to a, even up to a foot. Not really a huge change in his last, so he needs to get down harder now. I wonder Corey Wedlock, so just a couple of ends in a row from Corey after that little three, so 13-10. This is the Mitch sideboard, excuse me, before was running at the shot bowl of Mark Armstrong's. Um, so Mark did claim a one on this end after that. Four, grabs the one, changes the length of the end, 17 to 8. And, uh, need wine drinker, Ben? Oh, every now and then. Good. Next time you come, I'll get you a bottle of Chain of Ponds. Um, great sponsor of our club up in the Adelaide Hills. One of the better drops you'll taste, whether it's a Shiraz or a Merlot or a Sneaky white, beautiful drop, and a great sponsor of our club, great sponsor of Adelaide Masters as well. And Michael Smith, it is Ben Twist with me. I do thank him for his time. Loving his special comments. It's good to have experts sitting next to me because I'm no expert at all. <laughs> That's uh, that short bowl of Corey just coming across the head, forcing Gary to change his hand. Has been playing the forehand down there. Mm. He had a little bit of a think about it, switched over to the backhand to the open side. Is that quite a bit, Corey, the reset? Is that, is that something he's always done? Yeah, he does. Yeah, mm. he has done that um, throughout his career. Just such a motion sort of delivery, isn't it? So he probably doesn't feel right. He just resets and starts again. Yeah, he gets in a bit of a rhythm, Corey, and yep. with that big pendulum, mm. big pendulum swing, and I suppose if it just feels something a little bit off, he just he'll reset and start again, which is... Yep. For those bunning bowlers um, tuning in, that's a, a very good way. If things just don't feel right, you can... Just put the ball down or do what he does. Just take a slight step back and, and start again until things feel right. Yep. Correction here from Kelly. Great shot, Gaz. Is Gary talking to himself there, or is he talking to Corey? <laughs> I didn't get what he was saying. <laughs> Corey might have asked him a question. <laughs> Corey needs to just find... Doesn't like it. Just a little bit through. Second not, a bad, not a bad shot, though. Mm. is watching it. Trying hard to get down. His weight's impeccable again. Just didn't come as much as we'd like. Corey now needs to drop a foot of weight or he can keep that same weight and get a bit of a turn on the jack. Yeah, he's on a slightly tighter line. If he's got a bit extra weight, he might hold on to the shot bowl here. He's, he's trying very hard. Very close. There's a jack there too, Ben. That's a great shot. Great shot, Corey Wedlock. Looks like one. We've got confirmation from a marker. I'm sure Gary will ask the question. One or two down, please. He did. Marker saying two. two. Down. 
I suppose Gaz's options here. What's he got, Ben? Well, just coming down to have a look at that. If it is in fact two, I think he's got to probably draw this on the forehand. If it is two, he's going to come down and just double check that. Yep. He does have an option of a, a backhand weighted shot trying to remove both bowls. He does lie the next three. Yep. That is his toucher coming up uh, on the, towards the centre of the, the tee there. And if he can remove both of Corey's two shot balls, he will lie three, but it's probably a low percentage shot. Yeah, it is. Yep. But yep. look, it's from the mat. Get it. Look from the mat. There it is on. Uh, if it were, if it were any one, he'd be swinging down the forehand for the bowl or jack. Yeah, correct. Yep. The Royal Bell marker did suggest that it was two. The front bowl of Corey's could be in his eye too. He just can't see exactly where that is, but you're right. He probably can see the two bowls. He looks to be lining up on the forehand. Twisty. Well, it's big weight. Big weight. Looking to remove the two shot balls. Oh, oh. Well, great effort. Exactly what he said. He said two solid. He knew straight away. He said he got it in the in the belly rather than the edge. So wrong angle. Edge of that bowl had both. It's a great call. I think that's um, once again for the bowlers uh, watching tuning in today. He's obviously a forehand driver as well. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why he stuck yep, to forehand. Exactly. So we can see over on our, uh, our second semi final rink, Mark Armstrong. Trying to poise a bit of a comeback there. That was the previous end. Which is happening here. We go again now. So it looks to me. I reckon Mark got one in the last end. So potentially it's that bowl at, what do you call it, 9 o'clock on our screen that was a shot. Don't know. Definitely 18 8 now. Mitch had the option to. Well, I don't know. That looks like shot to me. Here we go. Yeah, one to Mitch it was. So oh, it was too. You're right. Yeah. Yep. Apologies. But yeah, that uh, Gary Kerr looked it looked like a four uh, a backhand drive there. But if you uh, obviously he's a forehand drive, yeah. if that's your specialty, stick to your yep. strength. Yep. Yep. He very nearly played that. He well, he took one of the counters out anyway. It was two. He cut it back to one, but he wasn't too far off getting the result too. So he knew how to get the angle, how to get the inside of the bowl, which is probably easy to get on that forehand. Just got it too full. Got the one out though, so we're 11-13. And yeah, that's three singles in a row now for Corey after dropping that three. Corey just losing the jack before too, so um, Gary stretching things out a little bit after Corey was looking to play an absolute bare minimum heading this way. Daz, no harm in trying to nail this jack right now. Andy start. Damon Edmonds tells me that you've now been converted to a Port Adelaide supporter <laughs> after Saturday night, Twisty. Yeah, I got the got the privilege, good shot here from Corey. Got the privilege <laughs> to go out and um, and see the game against the Demons yep. uh, the other night, Saturday night. So good game it was. It was. Him along with about uh, 40 other fans weren't too happy with the result. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was 40,000 grumpy ones. Yeah, it was good. It was good to watch live. Actually, coming obviously from the from the northern states, we uh, we support rugby league up there. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, yep. Haven't seen a lot of AFL, but uh, I really enjoyed it. It was uh, a very entertaining game. Big week for the AFL this week with the gather round in in Adelaide. So all nine games in Adelaide next week. Huge, huge two weeks for the for the town. Adelaide Masters one weekend and gather round the next. <laughs> Corey just asking where in relation to the jack. That last bowl of Gary's is. Obviously looking to, if it's if it's just uh, jack high or just pass, you'll stay on the back end. Uh, I convert to the back end, sorry, which he is. Just look to drop inside that, that blue bowl of Gary Kelly's. Or even sit the bowl through would be his best result. Yeah, well, anything past his front one um, gets the result he's after. Just needs to clear that front one. Doesn't need to... His weight was good.
Tenley Gain there, though, that last one of Corey's, isn't it? He still can play that next, that same shot next time and can get a piece of the jack now. It sure is. He can certainly get a piece of the jack off Gary's bowl mm. as well. Another shot to Mark Armstrong in the rink next door, so 18-9. Gary looking for here. Oh, he's looking for a piece of the jack. Oh, it's a brilliant effort. Certainly changes up that dynamic of the head. That's for sure. He's got three seconds now, Gary. Really important here for Corey to get in here. Corey back on the forehand now, do you think, Twisty? Or does he stay on the back end? Look, he's, he's certainly got both options. I think he probably will go back to the forehand. It looks very inviting down there just to sit on one of the three closest bowls or get a touch up. And that's what he's doing, lining up on the forehand. Needs another bowl on the head here. Doesn't want to leave that bowl vulnerable for Gary Kelly with the final bowl of the end. Asking it to turn a bit more. Needs to... All right, Gaz, one down the three seconds. What's he playing here? Sit the ball through in the forehand? It certainly looks the shot. He just doesn't want to get the back edge of Corey's ball onto the jack. In which case, the, the jack will go back to where Mark is standing and he'll probably drop a three. So, interesting to see what weight he plays here. Yep. He might just play that little perfect trail weight. Can touch the jack around the corner for three. He's going firmer. He's opted for firmer, looking to remove the shot bowl. Okay, so the run of singles continues. So four singles in a row. And we're back within one. Game on. Game on. Uh, rink two coverage. 18-9 it is at this stage. Mitch side bottom and Mark Armstrong just watching the last end now. It's at Mitch's bowl for shot. Mitch with the reply. I said earlier, Mark from Pine Rivers. That's right, isn't it, Ben? Has he played pennants there this year? Is that his actual? Club? Uh, I believe he's from Payalba, which is up near Harvey Bay. Yes, it is. That's right. Uh, okay. I, I believe that's his main club. Yeah, that's right. where he lives. Yep. Uh, but he did play Premier League for Pine Rivers okay. uh, in, the, in the season that was just yep. completed last yep. weekend. So, yeah, he was wearing a Pine Rivers shirt yesterday. Yeah, back, yeah. Back yeah. in Payalba colours. It's hard today. to keep track of where everyone's playing <laughs> it is a bit, at yeah. the moment. And uh, up in Queensland, you can... Uh, you can play for another club in, in, in Premier League and not be a marquee as well. So you right. see a lot of players play pennants for their, for their main club. Yep. And then they'll travel around to play Premier League. As um, long as you're within Queensland, it doesn't count okay, as a marquee. Perfect. So yep, yep. I'm sure that's what Mark did as he played for Premier League mm -hmm. at Pine Rivers. Yep. I think the memory you played for um, Paradise Point for the Broad Beach Fiber side as well. So I don't know... Um is that where Bill Cornell's was? That is where Bill yeah, is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Might yeah. have been a marquee for them Maybe. as well. Yep. Some of those events, yep. they allow marquee players yep. as yep. well. You see that a fair bit with the top players around the country mm. getting around and playing yeah. for different clubs yep. And yep. in all the different formats and different Premier Leagues, etc. That's fantastic. It's great for the sport. A loose start in the first two bowls. No one's really jumped on the jack so far. Just past 11 o'clock now, so the greens just speed and spit up fractionally, got a little bit wider. Corey here with a good shot. Well, that's two.
Guys is on a beautiful line. It all comes down to weight now. Yeah, you could be right, Twisty. Potentially the green has dried out just a little bit. It's the, the breeze has been around for about an hour now, so that may have may have helped. But we are pushing into the breeze going this way as well, so it's a bit of an added twist to the match. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I see you did that. I didn't yeah. practice that one. Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> yeah, I think it's even just Gary Kelly's body language, I think he really liked that last ball. Yep. It just, just went on a couple feet more than I think he was expecting, which would suggest that maybe the green is just starting to pick up a little bit. So Corey now asking it to to hold a bit longer. Kind of tied a line, but hang on, no, he's not. I read that completely wrong. I thought he was asking <laughs> it to hold, so he's played that pretty well. He yeah, has, so that's... At least two. Zach just passed the jack. He's had his own bowl. Mind of the folks at home as well. If you're wanting to watch the coverage, it's only on the Adelaide Bowling Club Facebook page or Space Quakes YouTube channel. Please don't click on any other filthy links posted through our comments. We don't want you doing that. So... Jump onto the YouTube Space Quake Sports or Adelaide Bowling Club page. Hope you're enjoying the viewing. A long way to go. 13-12. Anyone's game still. Kaz now probably two down. Did we see whether it was two or three, Ben? Yeah, favourite to be two. Yeah, looks like he's just drawing on the back end. Watching it. I think it's getting down, is it? Fraction heavy and mm. Corey Redlock will hit the lead for the first time okay. in this game. Five ends in a row. I think after that three. Yeah, five ends in a row for, for Corey. Mm. Four singles and then a, a, a multiple of two there. And all of a sudden he leads 14 shots to 13. We spoke it up. We'll talk about the sponsors first. Absolutely. And uh, Cooper's Australian Lager. Um, we love him being a part of our club. It's a beautiful drop. It is uh, almost midday in uh, in New South Wales. It's almost time to crack one. Thank them for their support. And whether it's the Australian Lager or the Cooper's Mild, Pale Ale's a pretty good drop too. But, uh, without their support, we wouldn't have this event. So thank you very much to Cooper's. Another good start there from Corey. Starting to apply some pressure now with the first few bowls. We spoke earlier about uh, when the way Gary Kelly started, he was on fire. And uh, we spoke about Corey with the ability just to try and hang in there and then eventually claw his way back in. And that's exactly what he's done. Yep. Five ends on the trot now. Yep. He hasn't dominated any of those ends. It's all been tight forward ends, but Corey's just managed to come away with the end on all, all five occasions. Yep. And all of a sudden, he's in the lead. We were saying earlier with um, with Hicksy, he has a really good poker face, Corey. I, I, you can't read him. Seem as unflappable. Um, Gaz shows a bit more emotion. <laughs> yeah, <Gaz. laughs> you always know what Gaz is thinking, yeah, that's yep. for sure. He's a good shot from Gary. He's only just <laughs> under the jack. Yeah, right, steely resolve, whether you're down by five or ten or one, you know, Corey seems to have that same, same look of... He's certainly a perfectionist, Corey, but the only thing you can, you can guarantee is if he hasn't got a front toucher, he won't be happy with it. That's about all you can guarantee, <laughs> but he understands, and he, I think, particularly against the likes of someone like Gary Kelly, he knows that he has to be very good to win. Yeah, yeah that's a good shot, that's too. That's a very good shot. Might see some weight here from Gary. Forehand, firm. Two bowls. Wow, great That's shot. Brilliant shot. Just stuck that second bowl out far enough to give Gavs sort of a one and a half bowl target. Yeah. And, uh, probably made it very difficult to draw as well. Yeah, exactly. Gary made his mind up. Yep. So a game of inches bowls. If Corey's about another two inches of running and gets right behind his own bowl, exactly there, right. it's a different story. One bowl target and can't see it. Tell you what, though, Gary Kelly's been driving unbelievable this event. Forehand whack has been uh, on song, that's for sure. Corey.
Corey, two down now. Got probably just over two feet to draw. Already played two rippers coming this way on the forehand and looks to be half close again if he runs. He's done enough. Gaz go again. Well, I dare say you will. He's got a little bit of room to draw the shot, but he just played a runner. Two second woods. Bowl clean. On its way. Oh, Gary. Well, he's unlucky. Stiff there, there isn't he? Yeah, he's didn't want that. Shot. Yep. Just wanted to miss the jack on the way through to score a couple. But nevertheless, he's got a result out of it. He's got a kill, which is better than one down. But you see in the replay, just got the inside edge, just got the bowl, got the jack. Could have got the jack with all the way back. Even I think Jack in the world would have been probably three, three if it stayed. Yeah. So, yeah. We've got next door, so it looks like Mitch is on the run. Next door, the previous end. Mark holding a couple of really good shots there. The score is now 18 10, so. Two to Mark here. Yeah. Okay. It's 18 10, and I can say Mark's got two bowls right on the jack looking over as well. Yep. Just after dropping that four a few ends ago, he's continued that, that comeback and. 25 up. Those last few shots can yeah, be Yeah, they are, mate. Difficult. Absolutely. Yep, yep. Long yep. way to go yet there for Mitch. So that game certainly still can go either way. Mark's been around for, he had a break for a while, but been around for a lot of lot of years. And you said hasn't been probably in the big televised finals, but very experienced guy. And he knows that 25 shots are still Long way away for Mitch. It's only seven, but he's only got. He's holding three there, too, so. He's sticking with his game plan, T to T in this direction. Good speed, just hanging out there fractionally. You know Corey better than me. Is he is he concerned that he's throwing him out too wide in that back end, or is he is there something to do with the breeze? That's uh, look, we all. We all like to think we play perfect bowls every time. <laughs> but I think uh, I, do, I do think there is a slight breeze coming across. As you said, they're playing into the breeze in this direction. It is coming across a little bit, so I think it is affecting the bowls from time to time. He's had a pretty good line this time. Has he got the run? He has. Played it well. That's a great shot, Corey Waylock. Great correction. See a change of hand here from Gary. Corey's last 25 minutes has been pretty good, hasn't it? it certainly has. It's Gary Kelly on the run. Oh, oh, okay. Not what he was after. It's not the ideal result, is it? No. You can see a replay here, just underneath the line. I've been hoping for that bowl of his to sort of hang around, get caught on that one there, but just cut it perfectly. Both players still got a, but one bowl remaining. That uh, Gary Kelly has got the two backus bowls now. Corey will just try and turn through his own bowls here, see if he can improve this head, and if he misses, he gets another bowl past the jack. Just change those angles slightly. Yeah. He's played very good weight for it. Just wants to stay on the rink now. And it should hold there. Yeah, he's done well, best backward. All right, are we going full ham whack? Forehand swinger. Okay. Don't like it. Three more to Corey Wedlock, so. 
six ends in a row now to, to, to Corey. We'll go back to rank two now. So 18 12. So Mark Armstrong picked up two more. Last ten is having a look here now. So it's front two. Each with an opportunity to try and draw. Yeah, just didn't want to come back. So that game's getting tight now. Corey Wedlock extends his lead to four shots. Mm. And once again, he's gone short in this direction. Ever since he started mixing the length up, it certainly worked well for him. Yep, great. I was a little surprised last time that Gary didn't go firmer. He's been driving so well. I thought he would have gone full. Yeah. 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 I yeah. mean, there was a shot on there for a swinger because he can swing underneath and sort of take a few bowls out. I, I completely understand his thinking, but he's hitting so well at the moment. Yep. Really good weight here. Well, it's for Gary Kelly now. It's all about just trying to win the end here. Yep. Just try and win the end and, and, and get the jack back, change the length. Try and stop this momentum that Corey has at the moment. That's amazing. We had that conversation about half an hour ago <laughs> about <laughs> um, about Corey doing the same thing. So swings and roundabouts this game pretty quickly. Corey hung tough and set little goals. Now he's won six ends in a row and Gary stuck on 13. Don't know what the unlucky number is for the Irish, but uh, definitely is for the Aussies. So. <laughs> For a bit of jack movement here, Gary. Got to be close, doesn't he? Well played, Gary Kelly. Yep. Exactly what the doctor ordered, and our, our marker just saying one, just the one to Gary Kelly. So, what's Corey's options here? Just sort of follow Gary down, um, turn Jack around the corner. Yeah, he hasn't got to go nuts here. Yep. He's, uh, well, he's just going to play a bit of a swinger up on the backhand. Okay. Um, Lifting his front bolt. It's a chance here for Gary, trying to double up. Little touch on the jack, he can make three. Tad wider he wants to be, but he got the one we were talking about, so momentum changes now. One to Gary Kelly. We're off that 13, so 17, 14 now. Now, Twisty's been a phone call made from St. John's. They want to not hear your voice anymore, but they've asked for another St. John's member to come and join us, so... Um, See young Joe Clark behind me. Yep, no worries. Mate, thank you for your time. Um, thanks for your expert comments, and we love having you here at the event, and we look forward to seeing you back next year. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been amazing. It's a good weekend, isn't it? It is. That's great. <laughs> thank you, Ben. Thanks, and, mate. And uh, as we say goodbye to Ben, we'll uh, get Joey Clark on board in the microphone. 17-14 so to Corey Wedlock at the moment. Gary Kelly getting an end after probably losing the last six, so chuck them on your head, mate. Joe Clark, welcome. Thank you. How you going? Good. Welcome to the, the commentary box. Um, have you enjoyed your weekend? Had a great weekend. It's been uh, been unreal, really, to be honest. The green's outstanding, and everything about the tournament has been unreal. It's been a great experience. What's your thoughts on today's game so far? Um, yeah, it's been, it's been really good. I think early, early Gary was going really well, but Corey Sorry, started. Sorry, just adjust your seat there. Corey started to really hone in the last half an hour or so. Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, we were just talking before. Um, Corey won six ends in a row, and Gary was stuck on 13 for a while. So Ben and I were just talking about the need for for Gary just to just to get that one back and try and change the length a little bit. Well, we can see that's worked pretty well already. So great shot there by Gaz. So your day yesterday, mate. Um, you final 16? No, you final eight. Yeah, quarter finalists, weren't you? Yeah, got to the to the eight and played Mark, and it was way too good to be honest. Yep, but, yep. Yeah. Great first effort, mate. Great shot by Corey Wedlock. Gaz looking just to replicate his last bowl and. Sneak past the front one. How's his weight? Very hard. Yeah, so, um, well, Mark's, Mark's um, 12 19 down at the moment, but um, a couple of good wins in the morning for yourself. Yeah, it was the um, first game really tough. Uh, went, went the full distance. Uh, yeah, went the full distance. 25-20 20, was a really good game. Yep. Went for a fair while and uh, Corey just slides by. Um, the second game was pretty good up on that top green, which is amazing. Yep. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to play good bowls and, and the greens are on a true yeah, important exactly. for hands. Yep, yep. And uh, yeah, had a good win there. That was a, it was just a pleasure to play on that, that top <laughs> green. Gary's just asked the marker who's got shot, and marker wasn't really want to, didn't really want to commit. Then he said to Corey, "Well, tell me who's got shot, Corey." So <laughs> it's pretty handy to be playing bowls with a club mate like that. You can, yes, have that sort of um, that rapport on the yeah. green. Yeah, absolutely. What's Gaz got here? Just again looking to get around his bowl and get to Corey's, but it's a touch wide. Here. Yeah. So before we twist here, there's a bit of breeze there. It's just holding things out a little bit. And typical with the head breeze going this way at Adelaide, that if you cut your line, it will go on you. But if you're just hanging a little bit too wide, it won't give as much. So it's a fine line there right now. Absolutely. And probably haven't had that the last couple of days since we've been here. It's been pretty pristine, no wind at all. Nothing but yesterday morning. Yeah. It was so flat, calm. So this will be a new, this will be new for the players to sort of deal yeah. with what the, what, how the bowls behave. So what's Corey do here, Joe? I think I think he's just trying to draw a, draw another one just to get under Gary's last one. He draws a touch on draws a touch where he's the three, but surely he can just persist under that. Yeah. I mean look looking from this angle here live that bowl of Gary's last bowl looks a bit closer to the line, but on the screen it looks like there is a bit of a track there, so we're probably just looking to see who's got shot to work out whether he plays it with confidence or not. Yeah. Okay, well, he be believes down. he's down, so he's looking to play weight through those front bowls. He's got Gary's front one. Didn't change that head at all, so... If there's a thought of a measure beforehand, there still is now. Hmm. He must must favour himself in his down move. Wait. Grab the tape out and have a look. It's the first time to Adelaide? Yeah, first time. Okay. Yeah. You've enjoyed it? Loved it. Went out to the, the footy the other night. The ah, you did too, yep. Adelaide, yep. Melbourne. That, yep. Was, yep. that was awesome. Always wanted to go to the Oval. Um, overall, it's just a beautiful city, to be honest. It's been a great experience on and off the green. Excellent. Well, I'm a die-hard Port Adelaide fan, so <laughs> can I give you a black, white and teal t-shirt? <laughs> we'll get you as an honorary member. I've right. already, already got a few others this weekend, so... <laughs> one to Gary. So one to Gary, so a couple back. We're just going to look at a replay of the Rink 2. So we've been getting some highlights of our Rink 2 game, which has got Mitch side bottom 19-12 up. So Mark Armstrong... Looks to be holding a couple there on the screen, and then if we look at the result, Mitchy side bottom sits the outside bowl for shots. So that's a four down, probably to one up. That's a big turnaround in that game. Yeah. Um, 
It's now 2012, so, geez, if Mark held that, he's on the replay just now. So this is that last end just played. And Mitch was good yesterday against Tyson Wilson. He was good all day. But Mark was good too. He knocked you off. Yeah, absolutely. Both been playing really good. And pretty similar rank to where he was yesterday against you too, wouldn't it? I think you were on rank yeah. three or four, so pretty similar location. See Mark probably holding shot there and just watch these next few balls play out. Mitch does pick up one, so... Oh, OK, right, it was that shot there. So Mark's half the jack over to Mitch's balls. So 2012 now, so... Mitchy side bottom's the first player to reach 20 in our semi-finals. Only five to go. Five's a long way, though, Joe. Yes, it is, particularly on the final day. Pressure with it. Last few seem very hard to get. Good two good openers from Gary. Couple Corey. of pretty handy starters, mate. So what's next for you on the bowls calendar? Uh, Joe, you got the Platinum Pennants coming up? Yeah, Platinum Pennant. Uh, I believe we start Saturday. Yep. Uh, looking forward to a new competition, obviously. Great shot here by Gary. Yeah, it should be really keen for that. New new tournament, uh, or new format of the, yeah. uh, the pennant in New South Wales. It should be really exciting to yep. see how that goes. The best of the best should, yep. be, should be awesome. These are squads look tough. It's a lot yeah. of good players. There's, yeah, there is like every every game is going to be like of the highest quality. Yep. And you got to earn every win. Yep. You know, it's going to be week to week, game to game, in incredibly difficult, which yeah, is brilliant. which is what you want. Yep. Big congratulations to Bowls New South Wales for putting it on. I think. It's, um, Absolutely. Yeah, they've done a they've done a great job, and you know even like. I've seen they've done like a tipping competition for and all, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, like it just adds to the yep. adds to the the whole I guess professionalism of the of the yep. of the new format. Eleven games in five weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Intense schedule, but <laughs> that's what that's what you want. You look forward to it. Like yeah, exactly. You want to be playing those games and yep. And that that competition it should be awesome. So, Gary Kelly holding two. Corey, what's he got here, Joe? What sort of options are we, we looking at? I think uh, I think on the forehand, you're sort of just playing that confident confident draw shot. You can rest on either one of his own or, or Gary's, I believe. Corey just watching the bowl of um, Mark Armstrong come flying across the rink after <laughs> a big runner from Mark before, so... like that is what he's trying he's done the trot too he's just watching it asking it to get down a bit more he's close here in you Joe close. how's and that for a shot what a shot and and fell on it and for fell two. for two wow. boy oh boy Corey Wedlock it's a great shot that is uh, what I would call a Cooper's Australian Lager shot of the day Gary Kelly forehand big one out the head. Which is again on the replay. How good's the coverage, Joe? Jack falls off Gary's bowl, drops two shots. Thank you for coming. Sitting there for Gary to go hit me, hit me. Gary takes out one. So mm. you got one out. And it's sort of tough. Tough shot here for Corey to add another bit of danger. Don't want to overplay it at all, so... Just a soft backhand draw. He might, he might back himself still on the fly. Yeah, he? he has, yep. That's why you're here. <laughs> Expert comments. Forehand staying right where he was. He's got a, a wall to sit. Anything sneaking past Gary's front one. He's trying hard. It's a really good effort. Corey arrests things back, so 18-15. The tactics have been um, 
really interesting this game. We'll talk about them in a second, Joe. We're just going to catch a quick uh, highlight. No, we're not. We're going to talk about the Adelaide Bowling Club. <laughs> what a great place to be. You've enjoyed your time, haven't you, Joe? Love the time. <laughs> So Christmas time around this place is just an absolute buzz. The, the amount of functions we have here and, and our Sunday Super Bowls, you know, we are more than just a just a bowling club. We are a, a function venue and, um, as you said, five-minute walk to the Adelaide CBD. Uh, yep. Where was tea last night? Where'd you go? Uh, we went to, uh, I think it was called Daughter-in-Law, which is an Indian restaurant. Perfect. In the city somewhere? Yeah, uh, yeah just at the CBD. Nice, said, yeah. nice. So you imagine you come have a function at Adelaide Bowling Club during the year and... A bit, of, a bit of bowls for an hour or so and, and a few drinks, a few nibbles, and then you can walk in the CBD. Rundle Street's three minutes away, and um, it's just the perfect location. So Absolutely. You don't find it very often in a bowls club. Pretty so rare, isn't it? To, Pretty yeah. rare. So if you're looking for your next function, Christmas, birthday party, engagement party, give Aaron and the team from the Adelaide Bowling Club a call, and they'll definitely help you out. We love it, and we hope you do too. The tactics have been phenomenal this game, Joe. It, short ends, long ends, playing to strengths, playing to the other players. Apparent, but no weakness. Um, yeah. It's, uh, the bowlers, they are. Obviously, uh, you try and change lengths when, it, when it's not going your way, but they both have the quality of playing on any any length, any time. Yeah, so. absolutely. Mitch Sidebottom's picked up two next door. He's 22-12. Um, Joe, this game is getting closer and closer to that, that magic number, so Mark's got to fight now. Yeah. It's a long way back, but it's very possible. Yep. Corey just... Was he covering there? Don't know. Not sure. I'll say as he was, but yeah. Gary two down. On the draw. Weight looks pretty good. He's played this really well, hadn't he? And what a fall now, yeah, even. Just watching it now, so it's a toucher. Just kept running through. Corey's not too sure. Doesn't change Corey's shot though, does it really? Yeah. Be drawing this and ideally draws draws a counter a foot past would be the most ideal yep. deal shot because there is a shot there for Gary if he if he leaves it there for a touch of a fall. Just having a think now. I don't know. Is he looking at potentially? You're not looking at backhand turning his bowls, is he? He's, he's surely got to look at the forehand open draw. Okay. His backhand. That's his line. Get under. His weight was really good to look for those two bowls. So I guess he had Gary's bowl to sit there at Jack High as well, didn't he? So I think he, he had a couple of options. I think he's uh, I think he's just liking the way that backhand's playing. Yep. He's played really good out that side last few ends and he can still get to where he probably wanted to on that hand if, particularly the way he's been playing it, mm. so Yep. You know, you don't want to particularly leave a Jack High bowl on the, on the floor and I guess he's probably his thinking. Yeah, good point. Because Gary's now got um, well, a big chance here, I guess. Gets Jack on the move. Yeah, draw with confidence here. Could, yep. be, could be a game-changing bowl. Jack down the line. Needs it full. Looks to be under the line of the Jack. Played the weight to flop in for shot, though. Okay. I think he made Probably two. turned out that shot for two. Yeah, good speed, you know. His back one's just dropped in just then as well. Just fell over. I don't think that changes anything, but I just saw at the corner of my eye that back one just flop in. Got to be two, definitely, doesn't it? It's definitely two. That There's one, two. It's 
still looking at this third one. Two. Taking three out now. Yeah, the applause in the background. Mitchie's side bottom's just played an absolute belter. We'll get a replay of that in a minute, no doubt. So, Corey's taken out two, and they're having a good look now. Did you say there's three out already? It took a third one out. I don't know if that was... They peeled three out. I'm not sure if that was considered in the count. Mm. Too sure. Just a bit of chatter between the boys there. Not too sure what that was about. So I think that's four shots. Well, there you go. Okay. Well, doesn't that change things? Absolutely. And we're just going to have a quick look at ring two very quickly, mate. We'll come back to this. That's the first full um, count, by the way, of, of this game. So so next door, Mitch side bottom, 22-13 um, now. Mark Armstrong just picked up shot. So he does get two on this end we're watching now. Looks like Mark. <laughs> it's just capturing a drink, just uh, just refreshing things down. Oh, Mark stiff there. Okay, so it's probably the second one that I've seen half on the yeah, replay so far. So two there. Um, it's got our president Bob Bob Burton just <laughs> on the scoreboard turn as well. So this is that um, this is the last end just played now. So um, I think from what I saw live, Mark Armstrong uh, yeah, gets the shot here. Shot. There's a conversion shot from Mitch. Now I don't know if this is the one or not. Yeah, that's it there. So brilliant shot there from Mitch's side bottom. Holds two and a look. And a big and reply. Then big reply from Mark Armstrong here. Pretty much keep him alive. Yeah, I love that. 22-13 now to um, Big time bowl. To Mitch. Huge bowl in the scheme of the game. Yeah, it keeps him, yeah. keeps him right in it. So we're back to live stream now, and we've gone full ditch again, full length again. Gary's just past the jack. There's been a bit of chatter between the boys that just after that last. I don't know what was going on, so... Not, uh, not totally sure. No. I'm trying to sense whether it was jovial or not. But a big change in this game with Gary Kelly picking up that four. It's 19-18. Fourth change of lead. It's the third lead change since Corey hit the front at 14-13. So good openers from, from Gary. Trying to consolidate after that. After picking up a big multiple. It's always critical in that if you're picking up a multiple to at least try and back it up and win the next yeah. end. Nothing worse than busting your chops and getting that, that number and then all of a sudden dropping, you know, a couple back. Particularly in a, in a game of this this stand, you know, like not every day you get, get a four in a game like this. Yep, and yep. You'd know, love to win that next end, just consolidate that, that go down you had. Well played, Gary Kelly. <laughs> Corey with weight on the back, uh, sorry, forehand now. Looking to get through the front two bowls. Just missed that one with a replay happening, but um, Corey has chipped his own bowl out. Gary probably holding three. Hold four. Yeah. Big bowl now. The yeah, this is that replay for Corey's one just then. So you can see he just got the bowl clean and his own one as well. So big bowl for Corey in the context of the game. Backhand. Solid draw. 
Looks to be close, Joe. Think, What's he got here? I think he's in a very good it's area. A very good shot here. That's what a great a shot. shot. How good is that? Regardless who's got it, that's a wow. It's a big goal. Four down. It's tearing down the barrel of multiple fours. He was never going to let four there, but um, yeah. the second one was his ultimate result. And uh, we're going to get oh boy Gary Benvenista to have a look at this one. Obviously pretty close. Big, big bowl in the context of that game. Joe? Yeah, you'd, you'd always back Corey to, to at least get inside the probably for third or second, but yep. you never know, big game. You know, just dropped a four, very, very easy to drop your bundle, but he's Absolutely. played a, a big time bowl there. Absolutely. Uh, the news next door, Mitch Sidebottom has picked up two, so it is 24-13 now. He just drew the second wood with his last one after holding shot, so he drew with his last for the, the, the free kick, the bonus. What's going through Mitch's mind right now, Joe? <laughs> hey, what are you thinking about? Just one more, just one more, yeah, just, just one more. That's <laughs> it. One more and you're, you're in a Masters final. Uh, Corey Wedlock, four down, draws shot. It takes the shot. 19 piece. So we can see next door here. So uh, this is the, that's the bonus one. That's the, that's the last ball. So holding two. Uh, okay, yep. Right. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, wow. Stuck in there. There he is. That's it with his last one. Need those free ones, don't you, to win these these singles events? Yeah, you know, give yourself two or three feet to draw. Yeah, big bowls are always the ones you look back on after a game. Yep. You know, if you if you lose a close one or you win a close one, you look back at those free kicks you had where you got a foot to draw or two feet to draw for your last one. And yep. Yeah, the bowls that win your tournament, so. A bit of love on the Facebook live stream for Bambi, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> the Jerry. Uh, that's Virgo. Oh, Virgo now. That's a good shot by Gary. <laughs> There'll be a, uh, a request for a 3-2-1 vote at the end of the event as to who is the better St. John's um, commentator. <laughs> so, cast your vote. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at 19 all now. Six to go. We could still be here for another hour. Yeah, the way it's going. We could be. It's a beauty of singles. It could be gone in the next 10 minutes as well. Only two ends away. The way this game's going, anything could happen. Gary Kelly draws an absolute ripper. Corey surely looking at that target gun. That's juicy. Yeah, it might be in his lips at this one a bit. Yep. Forehand. It's gone firm. Looks to be in a good line. Okay, one, but he's got, he's chipped his front one out and he's punched his back one out. So he's got no bowls in the rink. Mm. And one bowl to come. Game of inches, Joe. Absolutely. Gary just capitalises and goes, you make a choice now, Corey. Three down with nothing on the head. Are you going to whack at this or just draw shot? What are you doing, Joe? I think I've just gone with one. I might, I might just go again, but All right. that's me. It's very much preference. Corey's going to just try and draw the shot. Did it last end so well? Hell, he's close again, Joe. It's very close. How here. good is this for a shot? Corey Wedlock. Wow, we second wood. Great save. Oh, short. I think it's second wood. It is. Yeah. One, one to Gary. Okay. A big chance here for, for Gary now. There's no reason to underplay this one. It's the only ball on the green for, for Corey. Corey four off the jack. Corey four off the jack, please. Five inches. So Gary's asking how far Corey's ball off the jack is. Is there a chance yeah. Gary might have a look at that ball? Chip it out? Yeah, I think I think he'd be playing would definitely be thinking about playing that yeah. way to sort of swing yep. through that bowl, you know, even even if he does get as wide uh, as wide out to the jack and sneak it through for three, nothing past for Corey. 
or nothing at all. It's only Bobby's yeah. got in the head. But Gary Kelly looks to be a little wide of the ultimate line. One. So two big bowls in the last two ends for Corey when in a bit of trouble. And, uh, and he drops the one, so could have been in diabolicals after the last two ends. <laughs> Two two big bowls could be could be off the green now, but we, uh, <laughs> just drawing of the mat. <laughs> it's getting close to midday too, Joe. So we've got to like, once again thank our, one of our major sponsors, Cooper's Brewery, for their support of the event. Uh, this game's getting pretty close, and I might have a quick refreshment during the break. Also, like to thank our other major sponsors, Gomasal Wines, Chain of Ponds, and also CFS Bowls, where Graham and the team from from Darwin do a fantastic job for all your bowling apparel, casual wear. Look good and comfortable as anything. Joe. Rink two is over. Mitch Sidebottom is our first finalist in the 2024 Adelaide Masters. Mark Armstrong just wow. Mark Armstrong went to play a big conversion and probably didn't get the, the, the result he wanted. But that is that is a fantastic result for Mitch Sidebottom. Absolutely, He's played awesome. 25-13, yeah. a very good performance, and yep. Cannot wait to see him on the live stream in their afternoon session in the final. Once again. The big question is, who's he going to play? We don't know yet. No one seems to know. 2019 Gary Kelly at the moment. So Corey's last couple of ends, he's got those one bowls to, to save him, so... I'm just going to say, save his neck. Good <laughs> <laughs> session, please. Wonder Corey. Gary just needs to hold his line. I was thinking Corey's got shot with that back one. Yeah, chance, ch chance to draw another here and really put the pressure and see what Gary's got with his fourth bowl. Got to be close, doesn't he? Pretty close. Mm, that's a real good shot. And a touch up, great yep. shot, Corey Wedlock. Please. Literally, his last bowl, the last three ends, has been a touch up. Two down. Yeah. Mm, yep. The two down. Kelly with weight. Forehand big. Looking for the contact with the ball. Oh, how has he missed that? Almost snuck a bit wow. of the jack as well. Any part of it was was dead. So Corey won to come, so we we think he's watching this one of Gary now, so any bit of the jack and she was dead. Okay. Not much. <laughs> Not much in it at all. And, and Corey can be confident with this one now, even if even yeah, if he right. does touch his own bowl. Yep. Yeah, he's got his there. So yep. big chance to get a three. You get onto the get the first one onto the springboard. And he's going to get down harder. Doesn't need to get down. I don't think. I think it'll just be two. Thinking two. Mark and Rob McEwen gives us the indication of two. So it is 21 20. And it is a springboard, Joe. It's a springboard. That's where you want to be. Mm -hmm. my, uh, my good mate Steve Hicks inside will enjoy this. He believes it's called the spring roll, not the springboard. The spring roll. Mm, yes. <laughs> Don't ask me why. <laughs> Here's his last in there. Let's watch this. So 
Uh, repeat again. Mitch Sidebottom is through. He has defeated Mark Armstrong 25-13. This is the final end, so... Um, Mark... I think Mark plays a conversion with his last, and that's where the jack goes back, so... We're looking at the next shot now. That's right, so, so Mitchie's giving him the option to play through those bowls. This is this is the game down. I think he plays it pretty well, so he's got yeah. his own bowl coming in on the back end as well. He did play it really well and the game on the line right in the area was goes through that and it's it's bounced off his own wow. bowl and come squirting out sideways, so game of inches. So congratulations to Mitch Sidebottom and a massive shout out to Mark Armstrong as well for a fantastic event. Um he got a Make a semi final of Adelaide Masters. You've had a pretty good tournament, so congrats to both boys and best of luck to Mitch in the final. It's 21 20 now. Corey's on the spring roll. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anything can happen. Corey holding one, but Gary's response is pretty good. Sure. One down. Weight looks good. Can use his own to drop in if he needs to. Oh, jeez. He's just... Just use that edge. Fine as fine can be. Time speed. Hmm. So one bowl to come each. Is Corey looking to to protect potentially the shot that Gary's got with his next one, Joe? I think Gary's got that forehand. Yeah, I think, I think Jack he, trail option. So he is. Yeah, definitely looking to. On the back end, you count and cover or just slide by. Yep. He looks to be in a pretty good area. He wouldn't want to trail the jack too far. Okay. Two. I think we'll see something pretty firm from, from Gary now. Actually, so Corey has got the back bowl, but you would think, with the way that angle is set up, that there's a kill on, or can both bowls go clean, Joe? Surely there's going to be some jam there somewhere, doesn't there? To find out, Corey, uh, Gary Kelly, forehand big, wait. I think he's missed the jack the last <laughs> couple of ends by a combined one millimetre. <laughs> 23 20. Two shots away from another Masters final. It would be an unbelievable result if he does get through to, to you know, be in another final. He's. he's his record here, we think it's about 31-1. He's, he's lost yeah. he's lost one game. It was a semi-final to Nathan Black by a shot. So 25-24. Yeah. Uh, 23-20. Yeah. Not over yet. Doesn't take much for Gaz to pick up a couple here and all of a sudden they're both in a pretty similar position. He started pretty well here. Slide knocker. Great start. Couldn't ask for much more to start. It's a bit of pressure on Gaz. Looks to be a pretty fair response. 
gave it a chance in the in the game, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. yep. Gaz just looking to correct his weight slightly, do you think, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely be arriving. Can't afford any short balls at this stage of the game. Pretty Gary good Kelly. Shot here. How's this for a shot? Gary Kelly. Oh, shot. I'm not sure if he's... I'm sure he's well, holding that. About to find out. We're going to ask the market to have a quick look. Corey's asked the question. I'm saying Corey holding Corey. one, so... Be a bit dirty there, Gary. Feels like he's played a great played shot. It really well, yeah. And he still could be down game after this one. But his options are there too, I guess, isn't it? So he yeah, does, ju does change it. See what Corey does now. It looks to be. Okay. Don't want to change things. One to Gary. Backhand, one foot to draw. Jeez, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's just missed. He's overplayed it by, you know, one foot away. But it's in the game. Options are plenty because Corey's looking at a few angles now to see what the options are. Corey's got a shot, hadn't he? Yeah, he'd just be looking sort of. Obviously, to push that uh, Gary Kelly's ball through the head, it just the only concern would be those two down the line for Gary. Yep. You know, Gary would have another one to draw then as well. So he's probably looking at what maybe what hand is sort of taking that possibility out. So the biggest danger potentially is is getting Gary's ball onto the jack back to the two. He could be potentially you know lying two or three down with a ball to come. Yep. Or even depending which hand he goes, you know, if he's one front one on the line. That could get on yeah, the true. as well. Yep. Just, yep. just take his time. And Does he just get on the backhand and get his bowl up once? Is that the safer option when you're 23 yeah, 20? Who knows? He's out there, we're not. Let's see what happens. His backhand. He's arriving. Be a little bit on the high side, but it's dropping down now, Joe. Here we go, up through his own. His own. And it's gone one too many. Wow. He couldn't have played that any better, surely. <laughs> he's, he's played it pretty good. He's just very unlucky, isn't it? Now what's Gaz got? I mean, he, he, he can't afford to play with anything <coughs> from a danger point of view because he's only got you know two two left for Corey and that's it yeah so I think it'd just be a flat flat draw on the back end might be a bit conservative but backhand he'll back himself that's for sure yeah man of his ability how good to the head so he's on a conservative line which Thought that had happened, but here it comes now. Does he come from that bowl? Oh, that's a great effort. <laughs> one to Gary Kelly. Yeah, he's on the the spring roll. He as is. Well. He is very well, nicely. Yes. Bit of soy sauce. Hmm. Twenty three, twenty one. What a game! And don't forget the winner. This afternoon takes on Mitch Sidebottom. There's been some great games in the live stream, hasn't there? There's Tyson and uh, Mitch yesterday. Yesterday, phenomenal. All three games yesterday were yeah. unbelievable. Absolutely. Caitlin and Corey, there was almost an, an incredible game there as well. Yeah, well, Corey's, Corey started off so well against Caitlin, and Caitlin just, just fought back and fought back and held tough. Um, to, be, to be fair, we haven't had a, a, a poor game on the stream yet, so we've been very, very yeah. fortunate. Another one on our, our hands here. Yeah. I said this morning the Scotty Thole won a love of 25-24 on this one. So, 
Our wish could be coming true pretty soon. I get back to the action now and... Corey needs two, Gaz needs four. We could finish now. I doubt we will, but we're going to make it happen. It's gone real quiet, Joe, hasn't it? <laughs> Things are real tense now. Crowd's quiet. Corey just looking to drop a couple of feet away. How's his line looking, Joe? He's pretty well under, I think. Okay. It's a lot of a shot for now, but... No one's, never, no never one's got Jack, have they? No. Never no. 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 nails it to first one. A long way. Gary trying to get back now. Has Close he got the one. weight? He does. That is the shot. We're changing the forehand. You just get around Gary's. There's front one, you go very close. It's coming in now. Just a bit quick there. Big chance for Gary now to put a lot of, a lot of pressure yeah. on this last ball of Corey's. Mm. He's done it before, Corey. He's played the big <laughs> bowl with his last when he's been in a bit of trouble, so... We think it's just the one with Corey's bowl at 10 o'clock potentially second wood so the guys would be looking to sort of get a bit of movement on the front bowl potentially or at least at a second Corey hasn't really got much on so That high line again, Gaz. Okay. All right, so he's covering that 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 two at the back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, he's only needs two to win, so. Yep. It's. Uh <coughs> so is there a two on here, Joe? Like, is he is that is he looking for the two? Is he looking for just getting shot? How there, do you? There might be something there for a two, but I don't know if you. If he's only one down, you, you might just say stuff it, but try and play a maybe a slightly lower percentage shot for the win. Yep, yep. Like a backhand through the shot bowl. Um, no no jack. Yeah, Could hang around, yep. It's thinking about it, isn't he? Yeah, it's just sort of the... It's not, a, not the prettiest of heads. No. From our angle here, the forehand draw looks like an option too. You know, yeah, using... He's got his outside bowl, which we think second would anyway. I think that's what you would you would usually usually play, but you know, chance to win the game. Yeah, he's looking at that bowl. He's looking to chip that bowl out with no jack. We'll see where the jack ends. He's got two back there that Gary covered. Corey close. He's real close here, really Joe. Close. He gets it clean with no jack. And he's got oh, that Gary stuck like it a bit of the bloody chewing way. gum, eh? Wow. <laughs> One to Gary Kelly. <laughs> Stuck with it the whole way. That did not budge. You look at this. It's just side by side by side. Didn't even look like veering away from it. He almost got ultimately unlucky. Went, went past his own. Yeah. Yep, yep. One to Gary, 23-22. That's phenomenal. Look at that. Yeah. How good is that camera work? Great work by the Spacequake crew to capture that. We hope you're enjoying the coverage. 23-22 to Corey Wedlock. This is the semi-final we predicted, we wished for, and now we've got. So uh, we hope you're enjoying it at home. The crowd's enjoying it at the LA Bowling Club. And don't forget, we've still got a final to come this afternoon. The winner of this game plays Mitch Sidebottom, who's defeated Mark Armstrong 25-13 this morning. Joe, 
I got no idea who's going to win this game. <laughs> I got no idea. Flip the coin. Yep. Corey, uh, sorry, Gary, with a pretty handy starter. T to T. Just crossed the two and a half hour mark. Gaz has been playing these short ends so well and he's won the end and switched full length. I don't think it's, I think it's the first end he's thrown full length. Corey's been the one that's been driving that full length, but this is this mm. is Gary's first one, so big change of tactic. It's working so far. Just lost a bit of line there, the big fella. Can Gary make three now? It's holding two. I think he's in the area. Looks to be in a good area again. Coming in now. Okay, that is the three shots. So. This is how close this game is. That is game game lie right now. Corey. He's played them when he's needed to. He has, he has, mate. You're right. Big opportunity again here now. If you're watching it. He seems to have a bit more weight. Needs to sit a bowl of the jack. Okay, it's third wood. Third wood. Two says Marco Rob McEwen. So big opportunity now for Gary. Indeed, indeed. Doesn't need to change a thing from his last. He's stalking it. He's got that strut up behind him. I think he likes it. He needs to run a bit area. harder. He's going to push. He's just out. I think we'll see Corey switch that back in. <laughs> I don't think he wants anything other. That last ball from Gary. If it's only two, he can't go anywhere near that front yeah. one, can he? Yeah, he'd be. I'd definitely be safe to be switching and yeah, even a couple of rolls out of his own gets around it. Joe, do you, do you put Jack in the world for two? Can see it. If he's wide, he's got two of Gary's bowls, but the risk is his ball goes, he loses game. Looks like he. Might he be is. Going he's for swinging it. for it, looking for the Jack. Jack in the pit, or any bowls? If he had protection, his bowl probably couldn't go without going through the front one, so yeah. not a bad percentage shot. Yeah, 100%. percent I mean, always told if, you, yeah. if you've got a chance to win the game, try yep. and play the shot. Yep. You, know, you might not get another chance at it. So Exactly. It's two to Gary Kelly. It is 24-23. This game has been an absolute belter. No one in the crowd is moving. <laughs> Unless they're going to the bar for a Cooper's Australian Lager. Which I'll be going to soon. Two and a half hours of quality action. Gary Kelly leads his club teammate, Corey Wedlock, 24-23. Another lead change. Edge of your seat stuff. Weight's good. Corey wants to nail this right now, doesn't he? He wants to jump on board right now. Absolutely. Be the first to it. And there we go. Okay. Touch up. in response just on the high side which you can do on that backhand when you play a little bit extra weight Corey now 
love to snaffle up. Weight's good again, Joe. He's close here. Ooh. Okay. It's one of those, one of those good bad ones where I think Gary might be lining up now. Forehand quick. Jack in the world, any bowl. Swinging weights. He's got something. He's got something. Oh, okay. What's happened there? That is, is touching the ditch. He's got a foot off it in the ditch. Okay. So Gary Kelly needing one to win is a foot away from the jack in the ditch. Corey Wedlock with two bowls to come. One on the way now. He's drawing to the ditch. To he's the number. Been, he's been near perfect. Yep. If anyone can do it. He needs to sit. He looks quick to me. Oh, that's a fantastic effort. So we can see right there on the on the footage right now. So where the marker is to Gary's bowl, that's the distance. So we've got a foot. So that's the perfect angle. Gary now. What does he need to do? Give give Corey the heebie jeebies and get in his way somewhere or I think so, but there's no reason to go really close. But yep. Might do it anyway. He's close here for a second, wouldn't he? He's either trying to draw it or he, he does have a touch up up the front that he can potentially bash into the ditch, but it's a long way out. Okay. So let's set the scene. So it's 24-23. Gary Kelly leading one to win. He has touched her in the ditch. We're talking 12 inches away. Um, Corey's options are flat draw. Flat draw or option B, which is probably really, really low percentage, Joe. But as you said, there is a toucher there. He could try and hit in the guts. We're about to find out what he's got. He he's is looking for, for that toucher. Corey Wedlock with a toucher. He's missed he's that. Gary Kelly is our second finalist. In the what a game. 2024 Adelaide Masters, what a, what a brilliant semi-final, Joe. And um, Gary Kelly just, uh, just hung tough. There was times there where Corey looked to be in control and won those six ends in a row partway through. And, and Gary wrestled back ascendancy and... Um, it just, you never knew which way it was going to go. It toed and froed um, all morning, but we sit now with, with Gary Kelly, our, our finalist, and he'll take on uh, Mitch Sidebottom in what's going to be a mouth-watering final. Um, we think probably somewhere between 1 and one thirty this afternoon. Joe, thanks for joining me this, uh, for, the, for the little part this morning, mate. I hope you've enjoyed your time. No worries. Loved your expert commentary. And... Um, to those of you listening at home, um, yeah, stay tuned to the Facebook page for, for starting times. Yeah, sometime between 1 and one thirty. that's obviously SA time, so for those in the eastern states, add half an hour. Um, but we will see you all then. Thank you very much, Joe, once again. Thank you. Appreciate it.